meets Peter. He is learning Chinese. He was studying on his own with textbooks, flashcards, and apps, but is still having problems with basic conversation. This is Maria. She loves learning English, but she doesn't have many opportunities to use it. With italki, Peter and Maria are able to get personal online lessons to help them become fluent in a foreign language. You can start learning a language on italki today. Just follow these three simple steps. 1. Select a language. English, Spanish, Chinese, French, Japanese. Italki has teachers for every language. 2. Select a teacher. With italki, you can choose from thousands of experienced teachers from all over the world. And three, schedule a lesson. Online language lessons are the next best thing to living in a foreign country. With italki, you'll have a personal language teacher and real conversations with native speakers. Every day, thousands of people are connecting to international teachers through italki. Find a teacher today and become fluent in a foreign language. Hi, my name is Tom. I'm from the US, I'm a chemical engineer, and I'm passionate about language learning. I've used italki to learn eight languages to a conversational level. I grew up in Colorado, where I was exposed to many different cultures, which cultivated my interest in languages. One of the first languages I became conversational in was Norwegian. I decided to book a trip to Norway. To prepare, I found a group class with around seven people. Not only were they extremely expensive, it was around $40 to $50 per lesson, Progress was also frustratingly slow due to the size of the class. I heard about italki from a positive view from a famous polyglot. I was amazed to discover that I could learn any language I want, one-on-one, -on -one, and for the fraction of the price as offline classes. I thought, how is this even possible? I immediately signed up with two teachers in Norwegian. One teacher, we would have conversation lessons and go through a textbook. And with the other teacher, we would go through worksheets and chat about random things. So essentially, I structured the classes in a way that would suit my own learning style, which never would have happened without me talking. Within a year, I was relatively fluent in Norwegian. I was so happy that I could actually go to the country and use the language in a practical setting. And the best part is that I really enjoyed the learning process. I thought, why stop? I picked up Italian and mixed my interest in Italian cooking with lessons on italki. After learning Italian for a year and going to Northern Italy, I was able to easily get around and communicate with people. I then decided to set myself a personal goal of passing an advanced Italian exam and my teacher on italki helped me to achieve this. I was hooked. I'd found the ultimate formula for learning a language from scratch and staying motivated. I would book a holiday in a new country in one year's time so that I could put the language into practice. I did the same with Japanese, French, German, Russian, Czech, and Hungarian, and even explored Chinese, Thai, Serbian, Farsi, and Sicilian. From this process, I made so many valuable friendships and connections that has improved not only my communication, but also my confidence. Whether I'm watching the news in German, reading about Italian politics, speaking to my cats in Norwegian, on the phone to my friends in Bergen, or watching fitness and nutrition videos in Czech, I find a way to get at least some practice of one of the languages every day. I found the best way to stay motivated is to align my interests with my language learning, and in that way it doesn't take over my whole life, which people often believe. I find this way of learning on italki so much fun. Lingvi es una aplicación móvil que ayuda a practicar idiomas de manera instantánea conectando a usuarios disponibles en todo el mundo. Con Lingvi encontrarás personas nativas dispuestas a ayudarte a practicar el idioma que desees aprender. Los usuarios con tiempo libre se mostrarán disponibles para recibir llamadas y de esta forma ganarán recompensas ayudando a otros usuarios. Así es como conectamos personas de forma colaborativa y gratuita en nuestra aplicación. Únete a nuestra comunidad, haz nuevos amigos y mejora en todos los idiomas que quieras. Descarga Lingvi y practiquemos juntos. Este es Peter. Está aprendiendo chino. 
ha intentado estudiar por su cuenta con libros, tarjetas de vocabulario y aplicaciones móviles, pero sigue teniendo problemas para hablar. Esta es María. Le encanta aprender inglés, pero no tiene oportunidades para ponerlo en práctica. Con Italki, Peter y María pueden recibir clases personales online para hablar con fluidez en otro idioma. Tú también puedes aprender un idioma en Italki. Empieza hoy en tres simples pasos. Primero, elige un idioma. Inglés, alemán, chino, francés, japonés... Italki tiene profesores para cualquier idioma. Segundo, escoge un profesor. Con Italki puedes escoger entre miles de profesores con experiencia de todo el mundo. Tercero, elige el horario de tu lección. Las clases de idiomas online son el mejor método para aprender con profesores nativos. Con Italki tendrás un profesor de idiomas personal y conversaciones reales con hablantes nativos. Cada día miles de personas aprenden con profesores internacionales a través de Italki. Encuentra un profesor hoy y domina el idioma de tu lección. Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com and today we will be talking about three grammar rules to follow when you start learning Spanish. The first one is that as you have already heard, Spanish verbs are always conjugated. That means that they have to match with the subject of the sentence. For example, there are different pronouns in Spanish. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, nosotras, vosotros, vosotras, and ellos, ellas, y usted. All these pronouns have their own conjugations, and it's very common for beginners to mix them up. So remember this. When you start to conjugate the verbs, they have to match. The second rule is very important as well. The Spanish nouns and adjectives has to be in the same level. Let me explain you this. If you have a noun that is feminine and plural, for example, las mujeres, the adjective that you have to use right after the noun has to be feminine and plural as well. For example, las mujeres españolas. It is the same with the articles las, female and plural. We use this article because, as I say, it's female and plural. The third rule I already mentioned before, and be careful, English speakers, because the adjectives in Spanish go after the noun, not before like in English. This is very common for uh, students that learn Spanish and already speak or know English. When I say it, las mujeres españolas, españolas is the adjective, and I put it after las mujeres. In English, it would be the Spanish woman, but not in Spanish. Okay. There are some occasions where the adjectives go before the nouns. That is true, but normally this use comes out at intermediate level or advanced level. So do not worry when you are a beginner. Thanks for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the italki YouTube channel over here. Take a lesson with me on italki.com by clicking on my teacher profile link in the description. Hasta luego. Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com and today I will be talking about seven Spanish words that are similar to their English counterpart. These words are also known as cognates. What a cognate is? A cognate is a word that has the same linguistic derivation that another word and it looks similar and when you pronounce it, it sounds almost the same and here I will give you seven cognates so you can use them in Spanish as well. The first one is alcohol in Spanish. Guess you know what it means because it sounds pretty similar than in English, doesn't it? Number two is conclusión. This one has a different pronunciation in Spanish but you will understand definitely when you start learning Spanish. Number three, three. <laughs> Hobby. This one is completely similar. We basically took this word from English. Number four, individual. Of course, it's the same word, just different pronunciation. The next one, number five, is piercing. Yes, we use this word with the same pronunciation 
and meaning. Next one, number six is informal. I like to use this one in my lessons to explain ways to greet and say goodbye because it's similar in English and is a word that the students understand very quickly. And the last are some words related to sports. If you're learning Spanish and you like sports, you're lucky because most of the words are cognates like football, tennis, baseball, volleyball, hockey, water polo, golf, surf, and so on. As you can see, almost all sports are cognates. So talking about your hobbies should not be difficult. As you can see, there are many, and I would like to remember you that there are hundreds of cognates and if you check them, you can be ready to your first Spanish lesson. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the iTalki YouTube channel for more tips on learning Spanish. Take a lesson with me on italki.com by clicking on my teacher profile link in the description. Hasta luego. Hello everyone, hi. My name is Ariel Goodbody and I will be teaching uh, adult English today. I will be teaching English with storytelling, okay? So, please write hello and tell me where you are, what country and what city you are in, okay? Um, okay, so, I have three questions for you. It's smaller. Okay, three questions for you. What town and uh, oh, I see a bit of swearing in the comments. Okay, let's keep it nice and polite today. Okay, so three questions for you. What country and city are you in? It sounds like we have quite a few new people here today. Um, what is your favorite? Uh, what is your favorite type of music? What genre do you like? Oh, is there a problem with the sound? Can you hear me okay? Uh, let me just check my sound. Mm. One minute. Static feedback. Mm, strange. Okay. Okay. Is it better now? Let me try. Uh, okay, how does it sound now? Does it sound better now? Sorry about this. Okay, all good. Sorry about that. We had a problem with the sound. Um, okay, so I have three questions for you. Uh, what country and city are you in? What is your favorite type of music? What genre or, I guess, genres do you like? Like pop? country, hip-hop, that kind of thing. And, hmm, uh, what is something you miss 
because of the quarantine. Okay, it's something that you miss, something that you want to have again. Okay, so this is English with stories. Ariel Company. This is my name. Okay, so write the answers to your questions in the chat. So me, I am in the United Kingdom. I live in Bath, okay? Uh, I live in Bath. Bath is a small city in the southwest of England. And it's a very beautiful town, very historic, okay? And I grew up here, so I'm a local, okay? My favorite kind of music, actually, my favorite genres are... Um, <laughs> pop. I really love pop music. Pop music and show tunes. Okay, show tunes is musicals. Okay, I love musicals. Okay, wow, we have a lot of comments today. Fantastic. So let's look at your comments. Um, okay, so we have uh, Gulia from Valencia in Spain. Um, we have Ferruccio from Venice, Italy. Lovely. We have Andre from Slovakia, and Andre likes guitar music. Andre, do you mean electric guitar or acoustic guitar? We have Said from Barcelona, Spain. Oh, we have someone from Minsk in Belarus. Um, oh my God, it's so hard to read. You had so many comments, I can't read them all. It's amazing. So many people here today. Okay, we have someone, people from Madrid, Italy. Uh, a lot from Spain, from Frankfurt. Wow, there are so many people today. Fantastic. Okay. So we have quite a lot of uh, music lovers here. We have people who like someone, Victor likes trip hop. I don't know what trip hop is, but it sounds interesting. Um, we have uh, Alicia also likes pop music. Fantastic. Hey likes rock and satanic music. Okay, that's that's unique. Uh, fantastic. Pilar is here from Segovia. Um, Elisabetta is here from Italy. Wow, okay, there are so many of you today. So normally I read all the comments and reply to all the comments. Unfortunately today, I don't think I can because there are so many comments. So um, if I don't see your comments, I'm really sorry. Okay, because uh, I really like to read the comments. Um, okay, Vlatsania is here from France. Giuseppe is from Modena in the north of Italy. Um, oh, and we have the other comments as well, of course. We have Theleste again. Hi, Theleste. MSK from Egypt. Um, Sylvia from Costa Rica, but living in England. Fantastic. Sylvia, what part of England do you live in? Fantastic. Okay, so many people. Elisabetta likes 80s pop. I love 80s pop music. Um, I like, I think a lot of pop music now has like a style from the 80s, which I really like and influence from the 80s. Um, my third question, I forgot to say, um, is the answer to the third question for me is I miss going out to restaurants because I love eating out. It's my one of my favorite things to do is just to eat food. So I love to go out and eat in restaurants. So um, I really miss doing that. And when the quarantine ends, I'm going to eat so much food, so much food. It's going to be great. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Alex misses meeting his friends. That's a really sad thing. Um, I definitely miss my friends as well. Food is friends as well, though. So I, I miss food and friends. I miss eating food with my friends, mainly. Um, I saw someone say they miss their dog, I think, uh, walking their dog. Um, okay, what else? Oh, Sylvia lives in Norfolk. Okay, wow, that's very, um, Norfolk is a region of England that's a very, very much in the countryside. I have never been to Norfolk. Natalia also loves eating out. Uh, Elisabetta and Elena miss walking outside. I love um, 
walking. It's my main form of exercise. Luckily, in the UK, we can still go outside once a day for exercise so I can go out and walk. Alicia misses going to the cinema, definitely. Um, Piotr asks, what kind of food do I like? Uh, I like um, Japanese food, Chinese food, burgers and chips. Those are the three main ones that I eat a lot of. <laughs> uh, Lily misses her husband. Oh, that's hard. Okay. Um, Arancha is writing novels at home. Well done, Arancha. I like writing, but I have not been writing enough here. So there we go. Okay. So um, we are going to play a game today. And then we are going to do a bit of storytelling, okay? So I'm just going to put a table here. So I will write any new vocabulary in here. But first we are going to play, hmm, I think we will play, or you know what, because we have such a big class today, let's go right into telling a story, okay? Because, oh, no, what am I doing? Uh, because I think you will all have great ideas today. Okay. So the way it works is I go away. Okay. I have here some cards. Okay. I will just show you these cards quickly. Uh, stop sharing. Yeah. So I have here some cards with lovely pictures on them. Okay. So I will shuffle this deck. We'll shuffle the cards. So I will mix the cards. If you came to my classes before, you will know how it works. Um, so I'll shuffle the cards and I will take three cards and we will use the three pictures to help write our story. Okay. So we want to get the three pictures in the story somehow. We don't need, uh, it, it doesn't have to be literal. It can be metaphorical, okay? So we just want to try and get the pictures in the story in some way, okay? So here is the first card. So um, actually, let's not do that one because um, I already had that one yesterday with another student. Let's do this one. I like this one. Okay, so we have a tree in a forest and hanging on the tree are all kinds of colorful light bulbs. And inside the tree is a candle, okay? So um, it's quite interesting. I will show you these again in a minute. Here we have a well and two children are looking down into the well but inside the well, there is not water, there is the sky. That makes me think of Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay, and oh, I love this one. So we have a ring of fire, okay? And there is a mouse dressed up in a circus outfit, and he is training a cat to jump through the ring of fire. So already we have some good ideas, okay? So I will take a picture of these cards and then I will put them in the document so that we can look at them as we write. Um, okay, so just hold on a minute. You can already start thinking of brilliant ideas for the story. I'm sure you have great ideas. I know you have great ideas because I have made stories with some of you already. Um, and I will just put that picture in the story. Fantastic. Okay. So let me share my screen with you again. If this is your first class with me, don't worry. We will, it will be clear. Okay. We are going to write a story together using the cards. Okay. So we want to include these pictures in the story in some way. So I will write and then I will ask for your ideas to help me, okay? 
So these are the three pictures. We want to include these ideas in the story if we can. Okay. So once upon a time, this is how you start a good story. You say once upon a time, there was something. Now I want your ideas. Give me your ideas. Okay. So who is the hero of the story? Who is the protagonist of the story? Okay. Anas, don't worry. Soon you will understand what happens. Okay. So for now, tell me who, it, who is the main character, the hero, el personaggio principale of the story. Okay. A witch. Okay. Elisabetta says a witch. A soldier. Ooh. I like witches more than soldier. Okay. Oh, okay. I have a good idea. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a very dark forest. Okay. Piotr said a forest. There was a very dark forest um, far away from uh, normal civilization. Okay. So far away from normal cities, there was a very dark forest. Okay. On one side of the forest, um, Lily, so this class is in English, okay? Um, I don't know, you're saying you're getting English language. Um, anyway, conversations. So on one side of the forest lived a horrible witch. So a witch is an evil woman who does magic, okay? which is a very bad woman, very bad woman who does magic. So a witch goes <laughs> and makes potions, okay? So they lived a horrible, on one side of the forest lived a horrible witch and on the other side lived a brave soldier. <laughs> there are a lot of Italians here today, yes. Um, okay. The witch and the soldier hated each other, but they never met. They never saw each other. Okay. Um, Sylvia has a great idea. Okay. Um, nobody could go into the forest apart from the witch and the soldier. And inside the forest, there were many mysterious things, okay? So inside this forest, there are all kinds of strange, mysterious things. And only the witch and the soldier can go inside, but they hate each other, they hate each other. There was even a legend, okay? There was even a legend that deep within the forest, deep, deep, far into the forest, there was, uh, there was a, what do you think? Was it a, uh, a huge treasure? Uh, a magical well, perhaps. So well, remember, in the second picture, this is a well. Uh, maybe there was uh, oh, an evil mouse, okay, who tortured other animals. Oh, could be. Oh, Elena says on one side of the forest, there was, okay, okay. Nobody could go in the forest apart from the witch and soldier. Um, inside the forest, there were many mysterious things. And it was always nighttime. So in the forest, it was always night. Okay. Um, 
Natalia says a hidden cauldron. Ooh, okay, a cauldron is a big pot. A witch uses a cauldron to make magic drinks, to make magic potions. A tree who could predict the future. Okay, we're getting a lot of trees. Yeah. Deep within the forest, there was an ancient tree. Okay. So ancient means really, really old. So old. Antique. Okay. Very, very old. There, there was an ancient tree who could tell the future. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, the tree was not friendly, though. Okay. Um, because the witch went and stole his branches. So the witch took his. So trees have branches. Yeah. Branches are trees' arms. Okay. So a branch is a tree's arm. Okay. The witch went and stole his branches to make a broomstick. So a broomstick is um, a long stick you use to clean your house. So you, you sweep with a broomstick. I will show you what a broomstick looks like. Okay, got so many brilliant ideas today. Unfortunately, we can't have them all. Okay, so this is a broomstick. So the witch used the tree's branches. She stole the tree's branches to make a broomstick. Okay. Um, uh, after that, the tree... Uh, became very angry and nobody dared go into the forest okay so nobody wanted to go into the forest because he was very angry okay um but one day someone came to visit the soldier okay the soldier has a, had a visitor. Yeah, it's an angry tree like in Harry Potter, the tree that hits people. If someone came to visit the soldier. It was, who was it? Okay. Maybe it was uh, his grandmother. I don't know. Maybe it was a child, uh, an orphan. Okay. So a child without parents. I'm really sorry, my stomach is making very loud noises because <laughs> I guess I'm hungry, I don't know. Um, maybe it was a, a, a mysterious man in a cloak, in a, in a mantle, a cloak. Okay, what do you think? Yeah, Sylvia, so definitely the witch wanted to make her broomstick from the tree because it's magical. So it's like a special tree. Um, okay, chair, perfect. The, the Oh, you can't hear me, can you? Um, let me just write. Um, Elena says it could be two children. I like that idea. Natalia says maybe a little fairy, okay? Um, an orphan. Yeah, I think it's going to be an orphan, okay? It was a young girl um, who looked very dirty. Okay. Why are you here? Asked the soldier. My mother and father died, said the girl. Oh no, let's say they didn't die. Say so she says, um, I lost my mother and father 
in okay so where did she lose her mother and father maybe in a shipwreck so a shipwreck is like the titanic is when a ship goes yeah a ship goes underwater is a shipwreck maybe the girl lost her mother and father in a war okay maybe she lost her mother and father in a car crash but they disappeared okay something happened and they disappeared okay um Vadim says Walmart. No, there is no Walmart in this world. In a storm. Ooh, I like that. Okay. I'm going to say a storm, like Gulia said. Okay. I lost my father in a huge, huge means very, very, very big. In a huge storm. Um, the wind blew so powerfully that it threw it threw it threw our house far away but i was outside okay i don't know if my parents are alive i don't know if my parents are living okay uh or dead um but i want to find them Okay. Um, oh, you poor girl, said the soldier. But I do not know what I can do for you. Um, I do not know how to look after a child. And it is very dangerous here. Okay, so the soldier thinks he would not be a good father. I don't know. It is very dangerous here. There is a horrible witch and the forest is magical. Okay. I know, said the girl. That is my plan. Exactly, Elisabetta. I want to go and talk to the tree of life. Let's say it's the tree of life um to find out my future because right now i have no future okay the soldier thought about what to do he felt so sad he wanted to cry but he had to be strong yeah he had to be strong for the girl okay and we don't know if she died maybe she, maybe we don't know if her parents died, you know, they maybe didn't die. Okay. So the soldier has to be strong for her. Even though he really wanted to cry. Okay. Um, finally, he decided to do what? What did the soldier decide to do? Did he decide to help the girl go into the forest? Did he decide to take the girl to a city? Did he decide to ask the witch for help? What do you think? Okay. Uh, Vladsania, maybe the tree, I don't think the tree uses cards. I think the tree just knows the future. It is a magic tree, of course. And maybe we need to think, maybe on the journey through the forest, they find the well and the ring of fire. I like that idea. Yeah, okay, he decides to help her. Finally, he decided um, he couldn't let her go alone into the forest. Okay. I will go with you, he said but it will be very difficult. There is all kinds of strange magic in the forest. Okay. Um, uh, 
And if the witch finds out we are there, she will come and find us. Why? said the girl. Why does the witch, or why, why would the witch care that we are in the forest? Why is it important to the witch that we are in the forest? Why does it matter? You know, she, she can live her life, but why does it matter? Why does it matter? Maybe, um, maybe the witch uh, is jealous and doesn't want anyone else using magic. Okay. Um, maybe. Um, <laughs> Maybe she thinks that the girl and the soldier will use the tree to fight her. Um, sorry. <clears throat> okay. The witch is very jealous of happiness. I like that idea. Um, because she does magic in the forest, because she is um, an angry person. Oh yeah, I, I like all these ideas. Let's, let's put the ideas together, okay? She is a strange uh, creature, a strange animal, okay? Um, she thinks, the forest and its magic belong to her, even though the tree of life hates her. We might have to fight her. Okay. Yes, Vladsanya, they will, they might have to fight, okay? Yeah, and maybe, maybe the witch is actually protecting the forest. Okay, so um, they headed into, they, they, um, the soldier gave the girl new clothes and they packed a big bag of food, okay? What kind of food did they bring? Now, this is really important, okay, because I love food, Um I think food is super important. So when you go into the forest, you need to have good food with you. Maybe a, a thermos flask of tea. So a thermos flask is that kind of uh, bottle that you put tea into and it's warm. It's nice and warm. Um, so thermos flask is really useful if you're going away on a trip. Um, Uh, okay, so Vletsania, the tree of life hates the witch because, ah, Vletsania says Mamalika. In English, we say um, polenta. Okay, water, snacks, candy. We say sweets in the UK. Bread, okay. So Vletsania, the witch, the, the tree of life hates the witch because the tree took, the witch took the branches, the arms of the tree and made a broomstick, okay? Um, yeah, okay, so. A box of polenta, okay? So polenta is a nice um, food. This is polenta. You make it, I, I don't really know how to explain it, but I know it's popular in um, Romania and uh, Italy, okay? So a box of polenta, um, some crisps, Crisps are potato chips, but in the UK we say crisps. Um, 
a loaf of bread, uh, a bag of apples, uh, a big bar of chocolate, um, and um, some sweets, yeah, some candy, and a big thermos flask of hot chocolate. Mmm, delicious. Okay. We can pick mushrooms in the forest as well, said the soldier. Okay. Yeah, polenta is mashed. Um, you use a kind of, it's called cornmeal that you use. So you take corn, I think, and you kind of grind it up and then you, you cook it, cornmeal. Honestly, I have never made polenta. Polenta you make with this stuff, okay? So um, it's corn. So corn is like popcorn, yeah? It's the, the, the vegetable. Um, come on. Uh, Letania has hot chocolate every morning. Hot chocolate is delicious. This is corn, yeah. So it's you make it, you grind up corn, and then you cook it. And that's polenta. Okay. So um, the girl and the soldier headed into the forest. As they walked, they sang a song. What song did they sing? Did they sing um, Despacito? <laughs> Maybe they sung... Um, <laughs> Okay. Exactly. Yeah, Lily, it's corn flour with water and salt. Okay, so they sang, maybe they sang Despacito. Maybe they sang um, Happy Birthday. Probably not. Bella Ciao. Ah, oh, yeah, they sang Bella Ciao. Okay. They sang a song called Bella ciao. Okay. Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. It's a famous Italian song. Um, a very good song. And people are singing it a lot now. Okay. Um, so I think after walking, they come to this well. Or maybe the tree. No, this is the tree of life. So they, felt they come to the well. Okay. After a few hours of walking, they came to a well. Exactly, Barbara, when we're talking about polenta. Polenta is a dish made with corn flour. Um, we, we actually usually say cornmeal, okay? Cornmeal is like flour. Okay, so after a few hours of walking, they came to a well. So a well is the second picture. This is a well. You get water from a well. Okay. Hello, Yuri. How are you, you doing? Um, okay. So they came to a well. So Yuri, we're just telling a story together. Um, Let us have a drink of water, said the girl. Thank you, Vletsania. I'm enjoying the story as well. Wait, said the soldier. The well could uh, have some bad magic on it. We should be careful. Slowly, they walked towards the well, okay? They walked up to the well and looked inside. They didn't see water, but what did they see? Okay, what did they see? Um, inside the well. So it may be just like in the picture, they see the sky, okay? What do you think? Yes, Yuri, I'm good at pronouncing names right, okay. Ah, Barbara, yeah, maybe the soldier fought in the Italian resistance in the Second World War. I like that. Okay, so Vletsania, 
This in the second picture is a well, okay? I'll show you a well. Um, this is a well, these are wells, okay? So you take water from a well, okay? <laughs> Ooh, Hay says they saw their own sins. I love that, but maybe a bit too dramatic for now. Um, oh, okay, Elizabetta, you have given me the best idea. They didn't see water, but a um, house, okay? But the inside of a house. Uh, there was a nice fire um, in the corner, okay? In the corner of the house. Uh, and the table covered with delicious food and drinks. Wow, said the girl. She leaned over the well. So lean over is when you, you, you kind of move your body over, right? So maybe I lean my arm on the table and you're, sorry, you, they, are, they were looking in the well and they leaned over. Okay, they leaned over. So she leaned over the well to get a better look, okay? Careful, said the soldier. Suddenly, a person appeared in the house, okay? Um, it was the witch. She walked up to them and stared at them with her horrible eye, okay? The girl screamed ah! and almost fell in. She almost fell in. She did not fall in, but she, oh! she almost fell in. But the soldier caught her, okay? Um, they ran away from the well so that the witch couldn't see them. So the witch knows they are in the well, okay? Now she knows, said the soldier. She saw us. That well is connected to her house. It's connected, okay? Um, she must have put it there. She, she definitely, she put it there um, to see what is happening in the forest. So now the witch will come after us, said the girl. Exactly. Let's run. Okay. So they are not doing so well in the well. They are not doing well in the well. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, Milan, it's like video surveillance, like CCTV. Okay. They ran as fast as they could. Okay. The girl kept looking over her shoulder. She thought over her shoulder. She thought the witch would appear, the witch would arrive uh, and eat her. But uh, the witch did not appear, okay? <sighs> okay, <laughs> so. Um, Natalia, the soldier, maybe he was in special forces. I don't know. I'm not a soldier. So you have to ask him yourself. So I think next they came to this ring of fire, right? Um, what is that smell, said soldier? Okay. What is that? What is that smell? It smelled of fire, um, popcorn, and animal poo. Okay? Poo is um, poo. 
okay it comes out of your body not good okay like ugh, animal poo okay uh they saw a big white and red tent so a tent like when you go camping yeah you have a tent um to sleep in but this is a circus tent okay uh, it was a circus but it looked very small wow a circus said the girl i always wanted to go to a circus she ran inside before the soldier could stop her okay so the soldier wanted no to stop her but she ran inside okay inside there were what now your turn what was inside maybe many mice and cats maybe an army of ants yeah un ejército de hormigas okay maybe it's a trap from the witch oh no maybe it's um dancing uh insects yeah like flies and animals Ugh. what was inside and a horrible a nasty mouse yeah a really mean mouse a monster Ooh. okay these are all good ideas okay uh let's say the mouse yeah and the cats okay inside there was there were many cats um they were shivering in fear shivering is <laughs> when you are cold or scared you <laughs> you shiver <laughs> or when you are cold <laughs> oh cold yeah you shiver okay so shiver uh is when you shake because you are cold or scared okay um they were shivering in fear inside in in the center of the room was a big ring of fire on one side was a very scared cat uh and a big mouse the mouse looked very angry he was holding a uh, a very long whip so a whip is a whip okay um jump shouted the mouse at the cat but the cat didn't move so the mouse whipped him and the cat screamed in pain so pain is when it hurts and the cat ah! screamed in pain okay so this mouse is horrible okay no said the girl she wanted to help the cats so she what did she do okay she how does she help the cats um hey i don't know what ayahuasca means okay um so she stole the whip from the mouse did she um try to talk to the mouse maybe oh 
Oh, maybe she used the food to um, take the mouse outside. The cats were actually her parents. I don't think we're quite at the end of the story yet, Vadim, but I like her idea. So she took some cheese out of their bag. Here, mousy, mousy, mouse. I have some delicious cheese. As soon as the mouse dropped, as soon as the mouse, sorry, saw the cheese, he dropped the whip and jumped forward and jumped onto the girl. Okay. She screamed ah! as he ate the cheese out of her hand. Okay. Uh, while the mouse ate, yeah, they did use cheese, Gulia, exactly. So while the mouse ate, the soldier took the cats outside and told them to run away. Why were you torturing those cats? Asked the girl to the mouse. The mouse burped. Okay, a burp is when you go, you have gas in your stomach and you, you burp, okay? So the mouse burped and said, what did the mouse say? Why was the mouse torturing the cats? What was his reason? Okay, Julie asks, what does onto mean? Onto means on, basically, okay? So um, where did that word appear? Oh, so here you can say onto or on. It's the completely the same meaning, okay? It just means jumping on. He's like, the girl is here and he's jumping up and down, jumping onto, he jumps onto the girl, okay? So before he was not on the girl, now he is. He jumped onto the girl. Okay. Gulia says, I got tired of being a victim. I love that. Um, oh, ooh, the parent, the, the cats ate his son. Oh my God. Okay. Um. I wanted revenge, okay? Um, an evil cat ate my parents when I was just a baby. Evil means really, really bad, okay? Evil. <laughs> so an evil cat ate my parents when I was just a baby, okay? I had to show them... Uh, I had to... I had to punish them for that. Punish is when someone did something bad, so you make them do something bad. Like you say, you can't go out today, or you must write a hundred lines. Those are punishments, okay? So I had to punish them for that. Um, but that cheese was so delicious that I don't feel so angry now. Maybe it's time to go home, okay? Do you have anywhere to go to? Asked the girl. Hmm, said the mouse. Not really. Yeah, you're right, Saeed. Um, punish is like castigate, castigar. Okay, not really. Um, the girl thought about it. Uh, the mouse, the mouse had been really horrible to those cats, uh, but he had lost his parents just like her. In the end, she decided to... Did she decide to take the mouse with them 
or um, she decided to leave the mouse. Okay, what do you think? Does she take the mouse with her? Uh, Giovanni, drop is when you hold something and you let go. So I am dropping the peg. I drop the peg. I drop it. Okay. Where did that come up? Um, oh, yeah. So he dropped the whip. He stopped holding the whip. Okay. They take the mouse with them. I think that's the best thing. In the end, she decided to be the better person, to be a good person, okay? To not be like, no, go away. No, to be the better person. Come with us, the girl. Yay, said the mouse. Do you have more cheese? Okay. Um, Arancha. They're not leaving the mass. <laughs> Vadim says they're going to sacrifice the mouse later. Ooh, very bad. Okay. I'm proud of you, said the soldier to the girl. Vlatsania, go to the toilet. That's absolutely fine. If anyone wants to go to the toilet, you can. Okay, so the soldier says, I'm proud of you. Yeah, fiero. Um, yeah, fiero. I think is how you say in Spanish. Okay, so they kept going. Um, a few hours later, um, the mouse asked where they were going and they told him they were looking for the tree of life. I'm going to use Elisabetta's idea, okay? I know where that is, said the mouse. He took them through the forest to the tree. We're here, said the girl. But suddenly the witch appeared in front of them. She had horrible red eyes a long black cloak. So a cloak is like a really long piece of clothing. Okay, orgulloso, exactly. Uh, a cloak looks like, so yeah, proud means orgulloso. This is a cloak. So she had a long black cloak um, and horns coming out of her head. Okay, the horns are like animals have horns, okay? So like cow, or let's say bull horns. Um, Julie, hopefully, the so these are horns, okay? Hopefully, um, this is a very weird picture. I didn't like it. <laughs> hopefully, this video will go, this class will go on to YouTube afterwards. Um, I can put it on online, the document, and send it to you. Like a gown, a, a, a cloak is like a gown, exactly, Ilan. Okay. Um, what are you doing in my forest? Shrieked the witch. A shriek is like, ah! like a really high, horrible sound. Like, what are you doing in my forest? Shrieked the witch. Okay. Um, you weren't thinking of touching the tree of life, were you? Okay. So the soldier and the girl, or let's just say they, they had to act fast. They, what did they do? Okay. Um, maybe... Maybe the mouse distracts the witch while the girl goes to the tree. Okay. Um, you're right, Elena. The witch could be beautiful. This witch is not beautiful, but maybe one day she will be. Um, 
Yeah, okay. I th I, th I agree with Natalia. Okay. Go ahead. Go in front, said the mouse. Ahead means go in front of us. Okay. Go ahead, said the mouse. He jumped on the witch's face and attacked her. Okay. While he did that, the girl ran to the tree. Oh, wise tree of life. Wise means very intelligent. Please tell me, where are my parents? Yes, Julie, we're, I make, I'm making this up myself. Okay. I love writing. Okay. The tree smiled and said... What does the tree say? Where are her parents? Okay. Maybe the soldier is her her father. Alexander, we're just reaching the end of the story, so we're writing a story together. So I want your ideas. Where is the where are the girl's parents? Okay. What does the tree tell her? Sorry, we, we are running over, but we will finish very, very soon. Um, where is the girl? Where are the girl's parents? Maybe the soldier is her father. Maybe they are dead. Okay. Uh, maybe. Hmm, maybe. What if everything was a dream? No, I think that's boring. Okay. Um, the tree smiled and said, um, your mother was turned into a cat and your father lost his memory. Okay. Uh, the girl turned around. Um, One of those cats was my mother. Wait, said the soldier. Suddenly, he remembered the storm that had killed uh, the storm had taken away his memory but he was actually the girl's father <gasps> okay um how do they defeat okay unfortunately we don't have time to finish this story which is very sad because i am really enjoying the story so i'm just going to write a quick ending um and unfortunately maybe in the next class if um you are here we can do better ending okay uh because i have Oh no, this is the last class. Okay, well, unfortunately we won't have to, we won't be able to um, come up with a really good ending, but let's say, um, the witch had cast a spell um, on the girl's mother to turn her into a cat, okay? Uh, the soldier shot the witch, and all her magic uh, broke. So all of the witch's magic broke, okay? Um, the girl's mother turned back into a human and joined them, okay? The girl's mother and father hugged her and they cried, okay? The end. Um, Gulia, why didn't the girl recognize her father in the beginning? She was so young when it happened. Uh, yeah, this story maybe didn't make too much sense in the end, but whatever. Maybe the witch was allergic to the mouse and that's why she died. Um, I think we will stop there though, because we are already running over. Thank you so much for coming today. I had so much fun writing this story. I think I will even adapt this story and do a full version because it was really good. Um, if you like this story and you want more stories for learning English, I have a podcast, so like an audio show where I write short stories just like this and they are for learners, they are for learning English. So go to easystoriesinenglish.com 
and you can read all kinds of stories that I have written. Um, I will uh, put this document with today's story online and then I will put it in the comments at italki.com slash stay at home. Okay, so uh, I will post the link to this document a bit later at italki.com slash I stay at home. So go there, look in the comments, and I will put the link to the story there in a few minutes. Okay, thank you all so much today. I had a lot of fun. I hope you have a good day as well and you enjoy the rest of the classes. Okay, bye. Today I am going to be talking about business idioms or idioms you might hear in your office or in your workplace. A student asked me a really good question the other day. He asked me whether, because I'm an, a native English speaker, do I know every single idiom? And the answer is no. Idioms are phrases or expressions that come from a particular place or a particular age group. So idioms are different in the UK to idioms in the United States. I have chosen five business idioms to talk to you about today, and you may hear them in an office in the UK or in the States. So hopefully they will be super useful for you. Idiom number one is the big picture. Imagine you go into a meeting and your boss says to you, you've lost sight of the big picture. What does that mean? That means that you are thinking too much about the small details of the project and you are so interested in those little details that you don't remember what it is you're trying to achieve. So always keep sight of the big picture. The second idiom is to go the extra mile. Now imagine you're in an interview and the interviewer says to you that they are looking for someone who always goes the extra mile. What does that mean? Does it mean they want you to run around the office every day? No, it means they want you to do more than just what is in the job description. They want you to go that little bit further and to take on extra responsibilities. That is going the extra mile. The third idiom is a win-win situation. A win-win situation means everybody gains something. A really good example of this is these videos that I'm making for italki. Italki gains some content for their website, some lessons for their learners, and I have a platform where students can see me and book lessons with me. It's the win-win. Italki wins and Caroline wins. The fourth idiom is word of mouth. So an example of this is think about how you found out about italki. Did you find italki by searching on Google or did you find italki because one of your friends recommended it to you? Recommendations from friends are word of mouth. It can be positive or it can be negative. If your company gets bad word of mouth, it is going to be a very difficult time for your company because people really listen to the opinions of their friends. So make sure whatever you do, <laughs> you have good word of mouth about it. The fifth and final business idiom is to touch base. My manager used to say this to me a lot. To touch base means to have a very quick and short meeting about a project or something that you are working on. It might only be five minutes of your time, but in that time, you will check that your understanding of the project is the same as your manager's understanding of the project. So I have a challenge for you. In your next lesson, I want you to ask your teacher if you can touch base about what you have learned in your lessons so far. This could be five minutes at the end of the lesson where you review all of the different subjects that you have been studying. You're touching base about the things you have covered so far. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to italki by clicking 
somewhere. <laughs> and you can take a lesson with me by clicking on my teacher profile in the description box. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Welcome back to the Stop Being Boring When Speaking English video series. When speaking to native English speakers, it's useful to use a variety of vocabulary to make your conversation sound more interesting and flow. Why not spice up your language a little bit and impress others with your speaking abilities? In this next video, we will take a look at some American and British slang. Number one, American. John Hancock. John Hancock. Mm -hmm. So that's a person. It's a name of a person, yes. And it's American slang. Mm -hmm. What do you think it means? Um, I just got John Hancock. Does it mean that wasted? Certainly not. Give, give me an example. Okay. So, can I please have your John Hancock at the bottom of this paper? Come on, you gotta get it now. Is it your signature? Yes! You got it! That was easy! Okay, awesome. Number one, British. Peak. What does peak mean? Yeah, that's, that's Sorry, that's not taking a peak. That, that's not slang. This is taking a peak. Well, that's just like taking a peak, that's not slang. Oh. Like in a slang Like the peak of a mountain? That's not slang, that's actually yeah, a Yeah, that is the peak of a mountain. I don't know, tell me. Okay, let me give you an example. So, say you go out, you go out one night, and you lose your purse, your keys. Is it like phone. the most horrible situation you can be in? Yeah, exactly. You'd be like, that's so big. You'd be like, oh, so, yeah. How was your night? It was so peak. I just got fired. That's so peak. Exactly. Cool. So it's like the peak of badness, I guess. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. So the peak. Two, American. Jacked. Jacked. Does, Jacked. That, does that mean like hench? What does hench mean? Like, say, if you did. Don't answer back with a slang word. <laughs> <laughs> so the British equivalent of jacked would be hench. So okay. someone's like really ripped. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. So hench. Go to the gym, work out a yeah, lot. Whoa, look at him, he's so jacked. We would say hench. Number two, British. Peng. 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 P E N G. Peng. Like someone being hanged on the head with something? Or <laughs> just thinking of peng. Peng. It's similar, I don't know. I guess it is a little similar. Um, no. Give me an example. Uh, okay, so for example, say you're eating a cake, it's delicious, you can say, oh, this is peng. Does it just mean delicious? Mm, you could use it in other contacts as well. Just mean like it hits the spot, you know? Yeah, but I could also say that your eyes are peng. Oh. Or a person is peng. Just mean like extraordinarily awesome? Basically. Oh, if, you, okay. if you're talking about a person, you might even say peng ting. Peng ting. Like he's a peng ting. Okay. This is mostly like, like he's like a ten. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like the like the top of the top. Yeah, basically. Number three, American. I blew it. I blew it. I blew it. What a nightmare. I blew it. Yeah. So that means that you've completely ruined the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Say so like I didn't make it into didn't make it into school. So my parents will not be proud of me. I blew it. Yeah, when you locked up late to work, don't really ever do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never late. <laughs> Number three, British. Having a mare. Having a mare. Having a mare. A nightmare. Like, horrible, real nightmare. In realistic, in reality, basically. Very good. Okay. That's exactly that it. a lot easier. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd go to you. Having a mare? You were having a mare before. I was having a mare. Yeah. Not understanding anything she was saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there you have it. There's our British and American slang. Tell us what you thought of it. Did you understand it? And we'll see you next time. My name is Bong Nguyen, tên tôi là Bong Nguyen.
it's really amazing thing for me. From uh, from Ataki, I can meet people around the world, and they can give me more energy to live and more inspiration to live the world also. But Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm Yemi. I'm originally from Barbados. Now I'm living in Japan uh, for the past 11 years. Um, please feel free to write in the chat box um, what your name is, where you are, what you're doing. Just introduce yourself a little bit, okay? Uh, how's everybody doing today? Welcome to the italki uh, live freeze live sessions today. Um, I hope you will enjoy. We're going to talk about the future. We're going to talk about the future today, okay? Uh, so please feel free to introduce yourself. Hi to Sylvia, okay? Uh, introduce yourself in the chat. So let's get started talking about the future, okay? I'm going to share a screen with you uh, talk, so we can talk about the future. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the future. First of all, oh, and by the way, if you have any questions during my uh, talk, please feel free at any time to just write them in the chat on the YouTube page or on the italki page. Okay. I'll be looking at the YouTube page and the italki page. Please feel free to write your questions. There is a slight delay of about five to 10 seconds. So I will see them, but I won't see them immediately, okay? All right, so let's start talking about the future, okay? Uh, it's an interesting time to be talking about the future because so many things are so uncertain right now. So maybe the future actually, we talk about it a lot more often now, okay? Because we don't know, we wonder, okay? Why or when would we need to talk about the future? Okay, we might want to talk about our plans, both in a, an informal sense, just with your friends. What are you doing this weekend? Okay, we use the future to talk about that. Or uh, in a formal sense, uh, to talk about business plans, to talk about uh, plans, the government, when they, they talk about their plans, okay? We might want to talk about some decisions, uh, projections, okay, this is for business as well. Uh, what will the business be doing uh, in six months, in a year? And to make predictions about the future, to guess what will happen, okay? So these are just some reasons we might use the future tense. Hello, Cinzia, maybe, Cinzia, uh, from Italy, nice to see you. And Robert, okay, Robert, nice to see you too, okay? All right, so uh, let's try right away. I haven't explained anything. We're just going to try and see what you can do with the future right away. So I've got some cards. We're just going to pick a card and I want you to write me a sentence about plans, decisions, projections, pr predictions, anything anything that's in the future. So our card is technology, okay? This is our card, technology. So please write me anything you want to about the future with technology. What will happen with technology? You can predict something, okay? You can write something you think is for certain. Please tell me what will happen with technology, okay? technology. All right. So while I wait for that, let's go into how we talk about the future. We have two main ways of talking about the future. Okay. Uh, hi, Viet Vietsania, maybe, uh, from Paris. Okay. Nice to meet you. Okay. Uh, two main ways talking about the future. We have B, going to, and the verb. And we have will plus the verb, okay? Um, these can be very confusing 
which one do you use, when do you use it? So we'll go over all of that today. First, let's start with how to make these structures, okay? So of course, for the formation for be going to, the only part that will change is the be verb, okay? So we have I am, I'm going to watch a movie, okay? And then we have, sorry, then we have we, okay, the plural for I uses R. We are going to watch a movie. You are going to watch a movie, okay? Quite easy after I because they're all are with the exception of he, she, and it, which is is going to whatever, okay? So just remember, conjugate only the be verb, okay? And because we're using the be verb, we can also get contractions, okay? So when we put the verb together, I am going to, okay? We can change that, take away the A and replace it with an apostrophe, okay? So it's quite simple. You know all of this stuff, okay? Uh, for will, okay, let's look at will. Will is simply, there's no change, just will and the verb. So you don't need to do anything with it, okay? I will eat dinner at six, okay? All right, so let's get into when we use them. When we use them, okay. Sylvia says she's from Costa Rica. Hola, hola in Costa Rica. And let's see. Yuri, Yuri says technology will be developed. Okay, yes, so technology is going to develop a lot in the coming years. Good job, Yuri. Oh, Paula says, I'm going to be famous. <laughs> That's a great use of the future tense. Okay. Mm. Ah, okay, Nancy. Nancy, actually, thank you very much. Nancy says, so let's just, let me open another page so we can uh, look at this. Actually, you know what? No, that's going to be too difficult. Let's just use the same page, but go to the end. So Nancy said, okay, Nancy said, if I will, uh, sorry, if the situation, if the situation with COVID will go fine, I will start my new job. Okay, so this is a common mistake for speakers of Latin languages, Spanish, French, and Italian. Uh, I don't know enough Portuguese to comment, but Spanish, French, and Italian all do this. You have a conditional tense, okay, that uses a future in French, Spanish, and Italian. And so when you change to English, you also, uh, sorry, this one, you also use the future, okay? But for English, with an if clause, we don't use the future, okay? We do not use the future. So this would be the future in Italian, French, and Spanish. It is not the future in English, okay? So we don't say will go fine. Okay, we would probably say well, more likely, if the situation with COVID goes well, okay, or if it gets better. So it's not the future here, okay? For an if clause, it is not the future. Let me just highlight that so it's easy to see. For an if clause, it's not the future, okay? We use the present tense for an if clause. Okay, thank you, Nancy, uh, because that's an important, an important point. So thank you very much. All right, so let's look at when we use these tenses, okay? Oh, you're welcome, Yuri. <laughs> yes, yes, we shouldn't use if 
a, a future in the if tense. Okay. Uh, and let's see, Annie says, what will we learn from this experience? Okay, we're learning the future, how to talk about the future today. Okay, Nicola says, technology will make humans redundant. Wow, <laughs> that is a very interesting opinion, Nicola. So yes, definitely, technology will make some jobs redundant. Okay, we already have cars that drive by themselves. So maybe in the future, we won't need a taxi driver, okay? But I think some jobs will remain with humans, okay? For example, I am a teacher. I think teachers will probably stay human, okay? All right, let's look at the future. So first, we have two things we're dividing into, informal, like with your friends or your family, okay? People you know well, so business partners that you, you go out with, all of this can be informal and formal, official announcements, official events, okay? So for the formal, it's easy. We will always use will. Be going to is too casual, okay? So if it's a formal announcement, if it's something you're seeing on the TV, the government is telling you something, a company is making an announcement, there is a sign on a door at a business, all of these are going to be with will, okay? The informal is a little different. If it is planned, if it was decided before you started speaking, then we're going to be using be going to, okay? If it is unplanned, if you decided it right when you were starting to speak, we're going to use will, okay? So planned, be going to. You made this decision five weeks ago, and now you're talking about it, that is be going to. Someone said something, uh, and now you think, oh, that's a good idea. I will do this. That's unplanned. We use will. Okay, so this is the basic difference. Plan and unplanned. But for the formal, we always use will. Okay, so this is... Um, some people worry about it a lot, but I don't think you need to worry because if you're talking to an English speaker and you say the wrong one, they're not going to freak out on you. Uh, maybe only if you're doing a test, uh, you want to be careful with be going to and will, okay? All right, so let's see. Ma uh, Zami says, Mars is going to be colonized thanks to Elon Musk. <laughs> wow, okay, that should be interesting. And Sylvia says, technology will keep us together. Wow, that's a nice, very nice idea, Sylvia, because right now, so many people are stuck at home. And because we have technology, we're meeting here, we're talking about the future, you're learning English, okay? All of this due to technology. So yes, technology will keep us together, okay? Uh, let's see. Gulia says, if non-pilot cars become common, taxi drivers will lose their jobs. Yes, so I agree with that. There's a good chance that taxi drivers will lose their jobs. But there's also a possibility of new jobs. Okay, so for example, my brother makes uh, memory for computers. Okay, maybe 50 years ago, that job was almost non-existent, okay? Uh, he makes SSD drives. SSD drives didn't exist when I was a child. So maybe we will see some new jobs as well as some old ones disappearing. We'll see some new jobs, okay? Hi, Lords. Nice to meet you, Lord. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Annie says, because of technology, photo, photo, ah, photographers, photographers will lose their job. Mm, so people will use their phones more instead of cameras. Okay. All right. So let's move on. So let's practice. Okay. We said that we use for the formal, we use will. Let's try to imagine a formal announcement. Okay. A formal announcement. So first, who might make a formal announcement? Okay. Like I said, the government, the government might make an announcement. Uh, for example, we will be giving 
$2,000 to every citizen because of the economic problems caused by COVID, okay? So uh, we could have the government, we could have a business, okay? Uh, we could have a religious figure head, okay? A priest, uh, who else might make a school or a, a principal or head teacher at a school, okay? So what I want you to do now is try imagining you are the government or a business or a religious figure or a school, and you will make an, an official announcement, okay? Uh, this business will close at 2 p.m. on Thursday uh, because of maintenance, okay? Make an official announcement and use will because it's formal, okay? So we're going to use will because it's formal. Try to make an announcement. So let me write my example. Okay, this office will close at two on Thursday for building maintenance. Okay, building maintenance. So please try to write an example, an official sign or announcement. Okay. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> you guys are interesting. Okay. So, wow. So many comments. Let me try. Um, wow. So many. Uh, so Lisa says, sorry. Uh, oh, Lisa says the eye can't be replaced. So she doesn't think photographers will be replaced because it's an art. Mm. Okay. Skynet will take over. <laughs> Thank you for that interesting comment, Dima. Skynet will take over. Ah, okay, Annie, the difference between Gona and Will. Okay, I will get to that in a second. So let me write that down so we can look at that. Gona and Will. Mm. And Hey says, technology doesn't belong to human nature. Mm. Okay. That's an interesting idea. School will be over for the Easter term, says Nicola. Okay. All right. To go back to gonna versus will. So gonna is actually short for be going to. Okay. It's just when we say it fast, it sounds like gonna. Be, go be going to. And it gets shorter and shorter and it became gonna. Okay. So. This one, be going to, equals, in slang, equals gonna, okay? But this is super casual. So you wouldn't really use this um, so much with your boss or whatever, okay? Super casual. You'd use it at home or with your good friends. I'm going to watch a movie tonight, okay? So it's uh, gonna is the same as be going to. And uh, so the same difference with will be going, be going to, gonna, is going to be used with a planned decision, okay? Unplanned will. All right. So how are you guys doing with an official announcement? Anyone? Anyone? Ah, okay. So Yuri says you confuse formal and informal. Okay. Yes. Okay. So formal and informal. Formal and let's put casual in brackets to help us. Casual. Oh. And we just, let's put that there. Okay. So yes, informal or casual, okay? It means like I'm wearing informal clothing right now, uh, not formal, just hanging out, okay? I'm at home. Uh, if I was at, at my high school, I'd be wearing a suit which is a formal wear, okay? So yes, it's a little difficult uh, because they look so much the same, but formal is uh, like a suit or official business, formal, okay? All right. Uh, gonna to versus gonna ing. Ah, okay, so with gonna, gonna is the whole thing, 
We don't need to or ing after gonna. Okay, let me give you an example sentence. I'm gonna watch a movie tomorrow. I'm gonna watch a movie tomorrow. Okay, so gonna is the whole be going to. Okay, we don't need to add anything but the verb. Okay. All right. So I think formal announcements are a little difficult for y'all. Let's move on to look at uh, the separation for informal. Okay, so formal is always will. How do we decide, we decide for informal? Are we going to use be going to or will? How do we decide? Okay. Okay, so if it's planned, like I said, we're going to use be going to. Okay, if I decided last week that I want to uh, eat Indian food, okay, I'm going to go to the Indian restaurant, okay? That's because I decided it a long time ago. Uh, if my friend says to me, I'm going to the Indian restaurant, and I say, wow, that's a good idea, I'll go too. I will go too. Okay, I'll go too. That's it, unplanned. I just decided this because my friend said it and it sounded delicious. Okay, so I'll go too. Uh, we can use will for a possibility. Okay, uh, he'll pass his test. I think he studied really hard, so he will pass his test. We don't know for sure, but we think these conditions should lead to him passing his test. He he'll pass because he studied hard, okay? Uh, so as we said just now, already decided versus just decided, okay? But in the case of a prediction, okay, we can use both. For example, it's going to rain tomorrow. It will rain tomorrow. Okay, we can use both of these because we're predicting something, we're guessing, okay? All right, so let's practice. Talk about what you plan to do, what you plan to do. Let's get a card. Let's get a card. Oh, what do you plan to do this weekend? What do you plan to do this weekend? So for me in Japan, we are not on lockdown. Uh, the government declared a national state of emergency yesterday, but we're not on lockdown. So we can go wherever, uh, but I am not going anywhere. I only have to go to a high school tomorrow and then I will be in my house. Uh, if you want to, you can find me on italki. <laughs> I'll be on italki this weekend. That's what I'll be doing. I'm going to teach on italki. What about you? What do you plan to do this weekend? What do you plan to do this weekend? Okay. Mm. Nicola says, I'm going to take you on a date. Or maybe she's correcting something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Will is unplanned. Yes, Timothy. Will is unplanned. Hmm. Renata says, I'm going to stay at home because we're on lockdown. What are you going to do at home, Renata? Are you going to watch a movie? Are you going to cook a lot of food? What are you going to do? Agulia says, I'm going to complete homework I was given the whole week. Oh, Agulia is a student. Good job completing your homework. Uh, yes. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Yes, I am in Japan. I live in Japan. <laughs> so yes, I also teach Japanese. So maybe you can see my Japanese class if you want to next week uh, in the free sessions. I also have a Japanese class next week. <laughs> okay, Magda says she's going to the supermarket this afternoon. Wow, nice. Dima says I'm going to watch all the YouTube videos ever. Yes, <laughs> good, good job, wow. And uh, Adrian says, I'm going to stay at home. Yes. Is that a smiley face? Are you happy about staying at home? <laughs> okay. 
So good job, you guys, telling me all about what you want to do, what you plan to do this weekend. Okay. Uh, keep coming with the questions or the comments if you want to. Okay. Let's look at negative forms. Okay. For be going to, we put the not right before uh, our, between our auxiliary and our ing. Okay. So be not going to. I am not going to eat. Or with the contraction, I'm not going to eat. Okay. Or, uh, for example, you are not going to travel. You're not going to travel. Okay, be careful of the spelling, of course, for your. Uh, it's easy to make a mistake because your and your sound alike. Okay, remember this one is possessive. That's your car. This one is a contraction of you and are. Okay, so be careful. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of people make that mistake when they're writing, uh, especially on tests. Okay. Uh, for will, to get a negative form for will, we just add not after the will. Okay. And we can contract that to won't. Okay. But this is informal. Why is it informal? We don't like to use contractions in a formal situation. Okay. So if you're writing a business letter, you wouldn't use it. Uh, if you were making an important speech, you wouldn't use it. If you were writing a sign, you wouldn't use it, okay? Uh, you'd want to avoid that contraction in a formal sense. If you're talking to your friend, won't is okay. If you're talking to your family, won't is okay, okay? I won't cook today, okay? And the office will not reopen until May. So this is kind of formal. It might be on a sign, okay? All right, so let's try. Tell me something you won't do in the near future. Do not say, <laughs> I won't leave my house because I think many people are in that boat. Try to find something new, something different. What won't you do? I won't something. I'm not going to something. Please tell me what you won't do in the near future. Okay. So in the next week. Okay. What won't you do? What won't you do? So let's check some comments. Uh, we've got Tinsia. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Tinsia. Uh, I'm going to study English. Good job. Good job. Manuela says, I'll do yoga in my house's garden, yes. Maurizio says, I will paint my home. Wow, you guys are really busy. Wow. Um, yes, so let's see, wow. Will I be infected? Well, Annie, that's, that's dark. <laughs> I hope not, Annie, I hope you don't get infected. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, when do we use ain't? Okay. <laughs> Lots of questions, so let me write that down. When do we use ain't, says Said. Uh, let's see, Lore and Ale. Hi, uh, hi, Lore and Ale. Uh, ciao, buongiorno. It's nighttime here, so not buongiorno here. <laughs> um, Annie says, I won't be sick because I'm gonna stay at home. Yes, I'm gonna stay at home. Yes, good job. Um, and I don't want to be free and you're going to love me. I don't want to be free. <laughs> yeah, good, good reference, Paulo. <laughs> I love that song. Uh, Elena says, I won't do laundry. I don't like doing laundry either. I don't think I will do laundry. I won't do laundry this weekend. Hmm. Uh, and Dima says, I certainly won't go mad all by myself at home. So that's good for Dima. Some people are going quite mad by themselves at home. Gulia says, I'm not going to go outside. And Giuseppe, Giuseppe says, I won't eat cake. Okay. Oh, Philograph says, I won't stay at home longer than a week anymore. 
Okay, so are they letting up your quarantine where you are, Philograph? Okay. <laughs> I'm not a singer of Yitzania. I, I just like to sing. <laughs> okay. So let's look at some uh, questions. Okay. How do we make questions for the be verb or uh, be going to or will plus uh, verb? So for questions in English, we usually invert. Okay. We just take the subject that was at the beginning. I am going to eat and we switch it, put it after the verb. Am I going to eat? Okay. Same with will. I will travel. Will I travel? Okay. So will I live in this house for the rest of my life? Okay. Will he, will he finally marry his girlfriend? They're dating a long time and he's not married. Will he finally marry his girlfriend? Okay. Or for you, we would use are, are you going to, mm, are you going to cook mm, what? Lasagna? Are you going to cook lasagna tomorrow? Okay. So just switch the subject and the verb. So now, Let's try some questions. Let's try some questions. Ah, before we get to trying, we can also add the question words. What, who, where, when, why, and how. We can add the question words to make a, a, an open question, okay? So these questions are closed, yes or no. Only yes or no. Maybe, 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 okay? Will I live in this house for the rest of my life? Yes, no, maybe. Will he finally marry his girlfriend? Yes, no, maybe. If we would like to get some information, not just yes or no, we can add what, who, where, when, why. At the beginning, okay, and then the verb, then the subject. So the verb and subject stay inverted, okay? Uh, so if we cover this up, for a second, then we can see, are you going, are you going to, okay, are you going to the supermarket? That's the question. We want to know when, we just put the when at the beginning. When are you going to the supermarket? How will you get to the party? Are you going to drive? Are you going to walk? Are you going to take a train? Okay, so let's try, let's try. Ask me a question about my future, okay? Ask me a question. Will you what? Are you going to what? Ask me a question, okay? Let's see. Wow, you guys are commenting a lot. It's hard to keep up. Um, so Nancy says, I won't waste my time because I liked to do a lot of things like surfing. Timothy says, I won't sleep more than 10, more than eight hours. I won't sleep, that's good, <laughs> because I think on lockdown, a lot of people sleep a lot, and maybe it's not good, yeah, okay? Just one thing, Timothy, so you said, I wouldn't, I won't sleep, won't to sleep, okay? So after will, we don't need to. Okay, will or won't, we don't need to. Just, I won't sleep, okay? And let's see. Uh, lasagna, lasagna, Vietzania, it's a food. Let me put a picture of lasagna so that you know. Uh, it's a food, okay? So it's made with uh, sheets of pasta and uh, meat, is lasagna, okay? So these are lasagna. So it's just pasta, meat, pasta, meat, cheese on top, okay? That's what lasagna looks like, Vietzania. Okay, so let's see, any questions for me? How will you spend your quarantine uh, period? How will you spend your quarantine period? Um, says, who said that, sorry, Jul uh, Gulia. Okay, how will you spend your quarantine? We are not in quarantine. 
<laughs> in Japan. So I still, I go to work tomorrow morning. <laughs> so I go to high school to work tomorrow morning. We're not in quarantine, no quarantine at all in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, uh, if I was quarantined, I like learning languages too. So I would be doing some language lessons uh, on italki, okay? If I was in quarantine, but I'm not. <laughs> so I still have to go to the high school. <laughs> Let's see, what other questions do we have? So, <laughs> Paulo, you're just coming with the sounds. Ain't nobody loves me better than you. Ain't nobody loves me better than you. Yes, Paolo, keep it coming. <laughs> okay. And let's see. Is Paolo going to form a band with the teacher? Paolo, let's make a band. Nicola wants us to make a band. <laughs> uh, Julia says, will you travel to Italy? I want to travel to Italy. Perché posso parlare un po' d'italiano? <laughs> I can speak a little Italian. So I want to travel to Italy. But who knows what's happening, right? I don't know when we'll be able to travel. So <laughs> someday, Julia, I will travel to Italy. <laughs> um, Virginia, are you going to visit Spain? I visited Spain a long time ago. Um, I was working in the military and we were on a boat and we went to, um, we went to a little tiny town um, because we, I think we actually stopped in Gibraltar, Gibraltar. So we went to La Linea, which is a tiny town on the edge of Spain. So I've been to La Linea, only to La Linea. No one ever goes to La Linea. I've been to La Linea in Spain. I don't remember what city or what, but just La Linea. <laughs> so I've been to Spain. <laughs> when will you get married? Nancy, I do not know. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when I will get married. Um, <laughs> yes, will you take part in a famous talent show? Well, um, because I live in Japan, my voice, my kind of voice is very rare. So I sometimes get to perform at all kinds of things. But I'm not really a singer. I just like to sing. <laughs> Deborah says I should be a singing teacher. Oh, thank you. You guys are amazing. Yes, Vietzania, I speak a little Italian. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Thank you, Manuela. I don't think my voice is beautiful, but thank you. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Manuela says, I will not go out after this lesson. I will be at home. Will you speak Japanese? Um, Sylvia, of course I can speak Japanese uh, because I... I live in Japan. Um, I can give you a little taste of speaking Japanese. Konnichiwa, watashi wa yemi desu. Ima nihon no Fukushima ken ni sundeimasu. Okay, that's just a little taste because we're doing English in this lesson. But if you want to try Japanese, uh, look on the italki site. You can see when we have Japanese next week. I teach Japanese. And there's also another teacher called Atsuko that teaches Japanese on the free italki classes. Okay. So, well, you guys had some great questions. Okay, so let's go into the future continuous, okay? Future continuous. I want you guys to think about this, okay? We've got future and we've got continuous, okay? Another name is progressive. Depending on who you're talking to, you might hear future progressive. So I want you to think, how is this formed, okay? So we know the future set tense already. This is the future tense, right? Will we use that for the future tense? What did we use for the continuous? Can you think of how to form the continuous, future continuous? Okay, so, okay. When do we use a future continuous tense? We use it if we want to talk about a state or continuous action in the future, okay? Uh, for example, if I want to talk about uh, what I will be doing tomorrow at 5 uh, p.m., I can use um, the future continuous tense, okay? So here's something you have to be careful about because different languages sometimes use a continuous tense 
with emotional things, okay, or mental. Some people, some languages say I am thinking. So Japanese also says I am thinking, okay. They don't say I think, okay, uh, really. So emotional things, mental things, possessive, like have, we don't use uh, future continuous or stative. Stative is just a verb that is naturally a state, only a state. Okay, so we'll go back to these after we come to the formation. Okay, um, let's check some. Where will you be in five years, Eduardo says. Hmm, that is a tough question. So I've lived in Japan for 11 years. Okay, I've been here since 2008. Eight. So it's 11, almost 12 years, 12 years in August. And <laughs> so I don't know. And I have to decide right now, you know, if I'm going to stay here forever, if I'm going to go back to Barbados, if I'm going to attempt to go to another country. So I have no idea where I will be in five years, Eduardo. Interesting question. Do you like Japan, says Yuri? Mmm, I like it a little bit. <laughs> I like it, but um, it's like everywhere else. There's good and there's bad, okay? Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of Japan? Wow, so uh, everyone is really polite, okay? So no one is rude. Um, it's really safe. It's really safe in Japan. Um, so you won't get robbed, okay? Uh, and it's like, if you leave something somewhere, you will come back and it will still be there. Okay. So if you forgot your bag on a train, it will just stay on the train and you can go to a station after and get your bag. Okay. Um, but so for disadvantage for me, because I'm from Barbados and we're so bright and laughing and dancing and Japanese people don't do the laughing and the dancing, okay? So, um, yes, Eduardo says, I will be having lunch in a few minutes. I hope it's delicious, Eduardo. Okay, let's look at the formation of the future continuous tense. So future, as we know, is will. And a continuous tense is B plus ing. Okay, present continuous, I am doing. Okay, so the future continuous is just we change the am into will. And uh, sorry, we add a will before the am. Okay, I will be doing. Okay, so for example, let me make an example for you. Uh, next week, I will be uh, making online classes for high school students, okay? Next week, I will be making online classes for high school students. So this is something that is going to continue for a period of time. It's a whole week, okay? Uh, so we can use the future continuous tense. I will be making online classes for high school students. We can also use it for something that happens at a specific point in time. Okay. So next Tuesday, uh, what will you be doing? Okay. Tomorrow at 10 p.m., what will you be doing? Okay. So if you start before 10 p.m., if you finish after 10 p.m., that's okay. But at that moment, what are you doing? We can use the future continuous. And we also use it to make a question more polite, uh, especially in the service industry. So if you work at a hotel or a restaurant, okay, you might say something like, um, will you be having coffee with your meal? Okay, will you be having coffee with your meal? So that's just um, the same question as would you like coffee? But it's, again, more polite. 
by changing it to a future continuous. Okay, so we have will plus be having is a future continuous tense, okay? Now that we know how to form it, let's go back and look at the things that we can't do with the future continuous. We can't use emotional, mental, possessive, or stative verbs. Okay, for example, you can't say, let's put some X's in front of this so you remember, no. Okay, you can't say, I will be loving my new job. Okay, no, we can't do because that's an emotional state. Okay, we can't do mental. I will be understanding English. No, I will understand. Okay. Possessive. I will be having a new car. No. Okay. So I think some languages you do use a continuous tense for these things, but we don't in English. Okay. Uh, the new car will be costing $1,000. Very cheap car. <laughs> the new car will be costing $1,000. We can't do this. Okay. Let me attempt to get through some more of these comments. Julia, ah, my Italian is not good, but thank you. <laughs> Uh, come stai, <laughs> Vietzania? Uh, sto bene. <laughs> wow. Uh, you guys are nice. You guys are really, really nice. Alex says, come to Ukraine. Ah, I do not speak any Ukrainian. I speak this much Russian. <laughs> okay. But I am not, I can't speak any Ukrainian. Oh, Giuseppe, you like to sing too. You can be in the band with me and Paolo. So me, Giuseppe, and Paolo, we're forming a band. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, what did I say in Japanese? I think I said, um, my name is Yemi and I, I live in Japan in Fukushima. Maybe, I don't remember. Uh, let's see. Oh. Yes, Vietzania. I speak a I I speak a little bit of a lot of languages. I like languages. Okay. Oh, let's see. PDF. I don't have a PDF of this lesson. Oh, I should have made a PDF to send you guys. Wow. Okay. And yes, McDonald's. Oh, Kakdila. Horasho. <laughs> My Russian is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak Russian very well. Okay, so that's how we form the future continuous tense, okay? Talking about an action in the future that continues for a while or that happens around a point in time or when we use a polite question, okay? So let's try using the future continuous tense. What will you be doing at 11 a.m. tomorrow? Okay, at 11 a.m. tomorrow, I will be making lessons for my italki students. That's what I will be doing at 11 a.m. I will be making lessons. I will, oof, not bold. Let's try that again. I, oof will be making lessons for my italki students, okay? Because I teach uh, English and Japanese on italki and I have a whole bunch of lessons tomorrow. So <laughs> I'm going to be making uh, lessons for my italki students tomorrow. What will you be doing? at 11 a.m. tomorrow, okay? What time is it where you are? Right now, it's 9.48 p.m. in Japan, so it's dark. It's completely dark. <laughs> um, so 11 a.m. is not so far for me, okay? <laughs> what will you be doing? Let's see. So, um, di dove sei? I am from Barbados. Sono di Barbados, Vietzania. Barbados. 
This is Barbados, Barbados, okay? Barbados in English, Barbados in uh, Italian, okay? Ciao a tutti, io sono italiano, Jam. Okay, ciao, Jam, nice to meet you. Oh, wow, um, <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry, stative verb. Okay, Nancy wants another example of a stative verb. So stative verbs are just verbs that automatically express a state. They can't express an action, okay? So action verbs um, are something you do, something someone does, okay? I am talking, that's an action verb, okay? Uh, you are watching uh, me on YouTube or on the italki site. That's an action, you're watching, okay? State is just something uh, that is. It isn't moving, it isn't doing, it just is, okay? Uh, like, what is a stative verb? Um, I will think of one. <laughs> um, let me let me look for one on the internet because my brain is completely blank right now. Uh, but yeah, so if it's an action, then it's okay. If it's not, it's probably it's a stative verb. Okay. Um, let's see. And yes, so I'm trying to find some more stative verbs for Nancy. Um, so stuff that, like um, your senses. Okay, uh, hearing and seeing and smelling, okay. Uh, for the sense, we wouldn't use, um, let, me, let me actually show you something with seeing, okay. So we couldn't say I will be seeing, mm, seeing nature. We couldn't say that, okay, uh, because we don't use that see like that, but there is another sense where you see, meaning I will meet someone, okay? So I will be seeing my doctor tomorrow, okay? This is okay because it's not physically seeing with your eyes. It is this seeing means I will be going to my doctor. So this one is okay, okay? Because going to is an action. Uh, seeing, this seeing means going to, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, for example, uh, measure, when you want to see how heavy something is or how long something is, that's another stative verb, okay? Um, the Some of the verbs we mentioned here are also stating verbs. So uh, love is a stative verb, okay? Uh, it's already a state. You can't actively like, okay, I love now. Let's love. No, okay. Let's understand. No, it's a state. You're just there, okay? It's always happening kind of thing, okay? Same with have. It's a state, okay? It's not something you do. It's not an action, okay? So action versus state. Write that down. Action versus state. Okay. So let's go on. Here are some alternatives, some other things that you can use to talk about the, pres uh, the future. So we can use a simple present, okay, regular present tense. Look at these two examples. The train leaves at six, okay? So even though we're using the simple present, just leave with S, it's something in the future. The party starts at two. Again, just a simple present. Just start with an S. We can use this for schedules, timetables, okay? So when we say when something starts, when something leaves, when something ends, these sort of things, we use the present tense, but it's speaking about a future action, okay? Uh, so it's entirely possible to say the train will leave at six, that's fine. We could also say the train will be leaving at six if we want to be super polite, okay? But it's fine to use the train leaves at six, okay? For a schedule. Uh, then we can also use the present continuous, 
Okay, so remember the continuous is just the ing. Okay, I am driving there tomorrow. Let's take this down a page so we can see better. I am driving there tomorrow. He is speaking at the conference next week. If you're using the present continuous to represent the future, you are going to want to add a time, okay, tomorrow. You want to add a time. Because if we don't have tomorrow, I'm driving there. If I say I'm driving there, it sounds almost like it's now, okay? I'm driving, especially if I just, if there's no there, it's even closer. What are you doing? I'm driving, okay? Uh, so we need to add a time marker. Or if it's already in context, okay? If you ask me, how are you going to uh, the supermarket tomorrow, and I say, I'm driving there. I don't need tomorrow because you said tomorrow. We both know it's tomorrow, okay? But usually, if there's no uh, implied future, you need to add the time marker, okay? And uh, certain verbs also imply the future, okay? So you can use want to, these are actually good ways to avoid using the future tense if you're a little scared of the future tense, okay? So uh, what are you going to do this summer? I want to visit Greece, okay? In this way, you don't need to worry about the future tense, okay? I hope I, hope I can see that movie in the theater, okay? It's also a kind of future, okay? I plan... I plan to make a million dollars in the next 10 years. Okay, so all of these verbs, what are you doing next week? I might, I might visit mm, a temple, I don't know. Okay, what are we going to do for dinner? We could, we could cook pasta, okay? So all of these verbs are not future verbs. We're not using them in the future. We're not using them with will. We're not using them with be going to but they could trigger a future idea, okay? So they could trigger a future idea, no problem, okay? So you can use these if you want to avoid, if you don't wanna think about using the future, you can do that, okay? So we just have a few more minutes. Let me check some more comments. Vietzania, your dad is from Moscow. Oh, we say Moscow in English, eh? Vi Moscova, yes, okay. Um, I will be running a marathon this Saturday. No, that is not stative. So run is an action. Okay, you can do it. Um, that's not stative, Paulo. Um, and yes, Julie. So these videos will be um, on the YouTube page afterwards. You can find them on the YouTube page. They may disappear for a bit. They may edit them. I'm not sure. But uh, all of the indirecto uh, live feed videos will be on the YouTube page eventually, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, if not, I hope someone from italki will correct it. <laughs> but I think they will all be on the YouTube page. Okay. Um, Moscow. Yes. Okay. Let me write down Moscow for Vietnamese. Moscow. We say Moscow in English. Yes. Russian Moscow but Moscow in English. Uh, yes, so Eduardo, do I like teaching high school students or do I prefer adults? Mm, I like teaching freely. <laughs> so in high school, it's very strict about what you can do, what you can't do. You have a lot of points to hit. You have to get test results. Um, so if I'm teaching high school students outside of school, it's fine. But yeah, I'm not so big a fan of teaching only grammar. Okay, so today's lesson is lots of grammar, but we also did lots of discussion, lots of uh, interaction. I heard about some of your plans. So this is the kind of lesson that I like, um, and it's a little difficult to do in a high school. Thank you for that question, Eduardo. Uh, Yuri says, can I say I will be sleeping tomorrow morning? Yes, I will be sleeping tomorrow morning. Okay, so this one, you can also use if someone asks you, like, let's go to a movie uh, tomorrow at five. No, I will be something. What will you be doing at that time? Okay, I will be uh, working. 
I'll still be working at five. Okay. I will be, uh, I'll be washing my hair. Okay. For me, my hair takes a long time. So I'll be washing my hair. Sorry. I can't go. Yeah. I will be playing with my son says Yuri at 11. Okay. Yes, Sylvia, it's cold. It's cold here too. Okay. Okay. So that's all we have for today. That's all of our time. So remember future tense, we have two basic forms that we usually use be going to, or will will for formal company announcements, po politicians, government, religious figures, schools, be going to informal, always informal and planned thought about it last week, gonna do it now. Okay. Uh, Will just decided he's going to McDonald's. I think I'll go to McDonald's too. Okay. Uh, to make the question, just switch our verb and our subject. Will you go to McDonald's? Okay. Or are you going to go? Are you going to go? Okay. To make it negative, add not after the first verb. I'm not, I'm not going to stop teaching on italki because I really like it. Okay. Or will not, uh, we will not have any lessons on the weekend. We will not have any lessons on the weekend. So that is all of our time for today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. It was an awesome lesson. You guys participated really well, and I really enjoyed it. Nice to meet you all. I hope I'll see you soon on italki again. Uh, if you want to have a lesson with me, feel free to click the link. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. When, uh, when I can go on lesson and I feel that uh, I'm doing a very good job and then working at home with a very wonderful team. So, uh, I think that I can do something and, uh, and I, I'm doing something here. I think that I can uh, say idea and talk with people. That is the first motivation for me to come here. The second thing that I can have some money for my life to make my life become better and uh, more comfortable. It's a very wonderful website of RDK because RDK is the connection between the every people in the world with each other. There are many purposes for us to learn a new language. Innovation is the most important, not only study language, but also share an idea and culture and everything else in the life. And through the learning and, uh, and teaching, and uh, we can share more ideas and we can share our life better. You know, you know that because each person have uh, their own experience and their own knowledge and their own way of living. And when we meet the new people and we think that we are, we are discovering a new universe or a new area or something like that. <laughs> so it's wonderful that we have this diversity and we should just learn from each other. But if you at least just learn a second language and expose yourself to a second culture, not only do you understand that culture better, but you understand your own culture better. And if most people just did that and were talking openly and honestly about themselves and other people, I don't think there would be any diversity problems. Because we're all learning from each other. He's a very good student. He studied very well and he just learned for, you know, he just only studied for one month, but now he can speak very much with me. Later on, yeah, the student and the teacher can meet in uh, in a different country, and then uh, the relationship be become very good. We drink coffee together, and we uh, go uh, and I ride a motorbike, and I take them uh, along uh, somewhere beautiful together, and we uh, talk together, and then they come back to their country, and we become teacher and student again. We study again, <laughs> yeah. The number of refugees worldwide has reached historic levels as tens of millions of people seek asylum from conflicts in their home countries. 
Even for those able to reach countries willing to take them in, rebuilding their lives and careers in unfamiliar societies often proves challenging. For one group of refugees living in Istanbul, teaching online Arabic lessons to students across the world has offered a way to overcome these obstacles and establish new hope. As well as earning income, they have been able to share their experiences with people from different cultures and backgrounds, cultivating meaningful relationships with students. My name is Rahaf and I'm from Latakia, Syria. Previously, I had a normal but busy life. My name is Abdullah and I'm a Syrian guy from Homs, the capital of funny jokes. Hello, my, my name is Amr. Uh, I'm an Arabic teacher on italki. Uh, I'm from Egypt. Hi, I'm Hossam. I'm from Syria, Al Haseka, and I'm a teacher on italki now. Three years ago, I came to Turkey, to Istanbul. Many challenges uh, came in one time. Leaving a country is not, or leaving your home. This is one, it's like fish out of the group. I mean, yeah, my, the challenge that my career is almost dead. This is the only challenge now. Online teaching, yeah, it, it solves this problem, of course, because you can just be wherever and get online and start your class. What italki offered me is like new students I have never met from another continent, way far from me. Once they want to like learn my language, I feel like this is like, I feel sometimes emotional. Italki, Besser College and NGO Small Projects Istanbul are working together on this project. You know, it's important for people to kind of see um, and get to know someone who's experiencing a difficult time or who um, has had a, a difficult past and to um, just remember people are people are people. We need to remember that, um, you know, we're, we have a shared humanity and I think that gets lost a lot in the media or in the news. I'm teaching Arabic for first year students of Arabic in America. Um, we both enjoy teaching and learning online. Uh, it's an amazing experience for me as a teacher. I find it so helpful for me, also for the students. Going into it, people might like, like have these assumptions that you're supposed to like learn something about refugees or like understand something new. But I think it's like most valuable to realize that like you're not really learning anything new, other than that like this is like just just another person just like you my tutor muhammad was like so nice and so willing to work with my level of speaking and comprehension at the beginning teaching online was a new experience for me and it had a, a lot of challenges but now i'm used to it and honestly i am enjoying teaching arabic on italki i care now i care more I care more about the language, I care more about my students. Teaching Arabic is something valuable for me. Maybe give me hope or I feel gain hope. I, it's reward for me. Hi, I'm a language learning app. Can we move on? This is a dog. I don't have a dog. Repeat after me. This person eats bread. I want to practice English for my job interview. <laughs> Incorrect. You haven't reached this lesson yet. Now repeat after me. This person eats bread. Fine. This person eats bread. That's better. Moving on. ¿Cansado de aplicaciones de idiomas inflexibles? Usa italki para aprender como tú quieras aprender y estudiar cualquier idioma con nativos. Meet Peter. He is learning Chinese. He was studying on his own with textbooks, flashcards and apps, but is still having problems with basic conversation. This is Maria. She loves learning English, but she doesn't have many opportunities to use it. With italki, Peter and Maria are able to get personal online lessons to help them become fluent in a foreign language. You can start learning a language on italki today. Just follow these three simple steps. 1. Select a language. English, Spanish, Chinese, French, Japanese, 
italki has teachers for every language. 2. Select the teacher. With italki, you can choose from thousands of experienced teachers from all over the world. And 3. Schedule a lesson. Online language lessons are the next best thing to living in a foreign country. With italki, you'll have a personal language teacher and real conversations with native speakers. Every day, thousands of people are connecting to international teachers through italki. Find a teacher today and become fluent in a foreign language. Hi, my name is Tom. I'm from the US, I'm a chemical engineer, and I'm passionate about language learning. I've used italki to learn eight languages to a conversational level. I grew up in Colorado, where I was exposed to many different cultures, which cultivated my interest in languages. One of the first languages I became conversational in was Norwegian. I decided to book a trip to Norway. To prepare, I found a group class with around seven people. Not only were they extremely expensive, it was around $40 to $50 per lesson, Progress was also frustratingly slow due to the size of the class. I heard about italki from a positive view from a famous polyglot. I was amazed to discover that I could learn any language I want, one-on-one, -on -one, and for the fraction of the price as offline classes. I thought, how is this even possible? I immediately signed up with two teachers in Norwegian. One teacher, we would have conversation lessons and go through a textbook, and with the other teacher, we would go through worksheets and chat about random things. So essentially, I structured the classes in a way that would suit my own learning style, which never would have happened without me talking. Within a year, I was relatively fluent in Norwegian. I was so happy that I could actually go to the country and use the language in a practical setting. And the best part is that I really enjoyed the learning process. I thought, why stop there? I picked up Italian and mixed my interest in Italian cooking with lessons on italki. After learning Italian for a year and going to Northern Italy, I was able to easily get around and communicate with people. I then decided to set myself a personal goal of passing an advanced Italian exam and my teacher on italki helped me to achieve this. I was hooked. I'd found the ultimate formula for learning a language from scratch and staying motivated. I would book a holiday in a new country in one year's time so that I could put the language into practice. I did the same with Japanese, French, German, Russian, Czech, and Hungarian, and even explored Chinese, Thai, Serbian, Farsi, and Sicilian. From this process, I made so many valuable friendships and connections that has improved not only my communication, but also my confidence. Whether I'm watching the news in German, reading about Italian politics, speaking to my cats in Norwegian, on the phone to my friends in Bergen, or watching fitness and nutrition videos in Czech, I find a way to get at least some practice of one of the languages every day. I found the best way to stay motivated is to align my interests with my language learning, and in that way it doesn't take over my whole life, which people often believe. I find this way of learning on italki so much fun. Lingdi es una aplicación móvil que ayuda a practicar idiomas de manera instantánea conectando a usuarios disponibles en todo el mundo. Con Lingdi encontrarás personas nativas dispuestas a ayudarte a practicar el idioma que desees aprender. Los usuarios con tiempo libre se mostrarán disponibles para recibir llamadas y de esta forma ganarán recompensas ayudando a otros usuarios. Así es como conectamos personas de forma colaborativa y gratuita en nuestra aplicación. Únete a nuestra comunidad, haz nuevos amigos y mejora en todos los idiomas que quieras. Descarga Lingvi y practiquemos juntos. Este es Peter. Está aprendiendo chino. Ha intentado estudiar por su cuenta con libros, tarjetas de vocabulario y aplicaciones móviles, pero sigue teniendo problemas para hablar. Esta es María. Le encanta aprender inglés, pero no tiene oportunidades para ponerlo en práctica. Con italki, Peter y María pueden recibir clases personales online para hablar con fluidez en otro idioma. Tú también puedes aprender un idioma en italki. Empieza hoy en tres simples pasos. Primero, elige un idioma. Inglés, alemán, chino, francés, japonés... Italki tiene profesores para cualquier idioma. Segundo, escoge un profesor. Con italki puedes escoger entre miles de profesores con experiencia de todo el mundo. Tercero, elige el horario de tu lección. 
Las clases de idiomas online son el mejor método para aprender con profesores nativos. Con italki tendrás un profesor de idiomas personal y conversaciones reales con hablantes nativos. Cada día miles de personas aprenden con profesores internacionales a través de italki. Encuentra un profesor hoy y domina el idioma de tu lección. Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com and today we will be talking about three grammar rules to follow when you start learning Spanish. The first one is that as you have already heard, Spanish verbs are always conjugated. That means that they have to match with the subject of the sentence. For example, there are different... Hi there, everyone. My name is Vicente and I teach and I am a test preparation specialist here on italki. Hi there, guys. <coughs> I'm Nas, and I am from Antalya in Turkey. So please tell me where in the world are you from? I'd love to know where you guys are from. Okay, guys, where are you from? I've heard today <clears throat> that we have many students from Italy and many new students. So where are you guys from? Just feel free to type in the chat and I will look at your comments. Okay, hello and welcome from the Ukraine. Okay, anyone else out there? Ah, you've been to Antalya many times and Maurizio, you are from Italy, fantastic. Okay, great, anyone else out there? I think we've got some comments coming through on our live stream. All right, where are you from, guys? All right. Hey, all right, so who we've got here? Ah, you were in Antalya many years ago. Did you enjoy it? All right, and Nudin from Kenya, wow, from my continent. I'm originally from South Africa, and hi, Laura. All right, guys, so I am now managing two threads so I've got the live comments here, and then I'm going to also look at the YouTube. Adrian from Paris. I have been to Paris, and I loved it. I really did. I went, um, well, to all of the hotspots, um, Notre Dame, and the Eiffel Tower, and Versailles, and it was amazing. It was memorable. Okay, guys. Now, I think a lot of you are new, so let me explain what I'm going to do today. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you questions, but not just any random questions. I'm going to ask you questions that have grammar built in. So today we're going to look at second conditional, but do not be afraid. If your grammar is not great, don't worry about it. We will be fine. I will hold your hand and walk you through it, okay? Are you ready to get started? <clears throat> right, guys, so let's do this. All right. So today's lesson will cover a time capsule. I'm going to ask you a question about that. True or false questions. Second conditional, but stay calm. The questions are really fun. And I want to end the lesson with three fun facts about you. We've got a lot to cover. So if you're ready, let's do this. What three things from 2019 would you put in a time capsule? I know it seems like a long, long time ago, 2019. What three things from 2019 
would you put in a time capsule? So a time capsule could be a bottle or a container that you put things in and you bury it so that someone in the future can open it <clears throat> and have an idea of what life was during our time. So they in the future, so we are now in the past. All right. So what three things would you put in a time capsule? But from 2019, because I don't think we have anything much from 2020 except hand sanitizer, masks, and gloves. All right. So, guys, when you see the little typewriter, it means that I want you to type in the chat. All right. So, I'm going to go and check. All right, Alex, the ability to leave the house. All right. And I'm just going to try and refresh this and see what's going on with this. Okay, what three things would you put in a time capsule? What three things would you put in a time capsule? Okay, so Alex, toilet paper. All right, anyone else there? What would you put in a time capsule? So if it's for 2020, I would say mask, gloves, and hand sanitizer, and then the world will know what we uh, were going through in 2020. But what about 2019? Ah, okay, Barbara, you would tell the people in the future, close the border. All right, good job. And Carmen, if I was in 2019, san sanitary uh, gloves, all right, the plastic gloves, and my old house. Okay, good job. And the newspaper, Adrian, anything else, guys? Keep going, keep putting everything in the chat, and I will come back and look at it right now where in the world is this so i know we've got an italian on the chat where in the world is this and what is the name of the painting where in the world is this and where um what is the name of the painting when you see my little typewriter guys then please type away okay then just type 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 all right Yes, it's the Sistine Chapel, and it's called The Creation of Man by, in English, Michelangelo, in Italian, Michelangelo, my favorite painter. And in 2020, this is what it would look like. Hand sanitizer first. All right, guys. Now we're going to move on to our true-false questions. And I just want you to write the answer in the chat. So Frank Sinatra hated rock and roll music. Just type in true or false. And I'm going to come and check your answers. Frank Sinatra hated rock and roll music. <clears throat> okay, and Mila, where are you from, Mila? I will put some photos of buildings, magazines, and some trendy clothing if there's space. Yes, Mila, make your time capsule as big as you like. Okay, so true or false? True or false? Frank Sinatra hated rock music, guys. True or false? False, Carmen. Alex, true. Anyone else? Anyone else has any ideas? Laura, true. All right, anyone else? Well, let's see whether you're right or wrong. Okay, there's some interesting ones here. And the answer is true. He said, it is the most brutal, ugly, desperate, vicious form of expression. It has been my misfortune to hear. I think he absolutely hated it. All right, what about our friend Einstein? Albert Einstein once failed a mathematics examination. True or false, guys? Einstein failed a mathematics exam. Do you think that's even possible? At first, I thought it was a trick question. Like, it's impossible that Einstein would have 
failed a maths exam, but maybe he did. It's a trick question. Maybe it happened once. Everyone has a bad day. And the answer is false. He was actually pretty good at mathematics as we know. However, he did fail a school entrance exam. And do you know what he failed at? The core topics, history, languages, and geography languages, well, perhaps he should have signed up with us at italki, all right. But he wrote the exam a year later and he passed. Next, true or false question. Black cats were denounced by the Vatican as being a stand-in for the devil. So perhaps this is where everything about if a black cat crosses your path, you will have bad luck, you will die, whatever comes from. So black cats were denounced by the Vatican as being a stand-in, a substitute, an agent for the devil. True, false? Which one do you think it is? <clears throat> Let me check your answers and see who we have with us today mm-hmm so we've got a couple truths are we talking about the cats all right ah alex um einstein may have had autism apparently he probably wouldn't have been diagnosed back in the day highly highly likely highly possible uh at that time things were not uh Things were not always, um, they didn't have the advances in medicine that we have now. All right. Okay, that's fine. So let's go back to our cats. And what do you think about the Vatican? And this one is actually true. Um, the Pope even uh, issued a papal bull, okay, saying that, the black, the black cats were a stand-in for the devil, and this led to mass killing of black cats for decades. In the time of corona and people being sick and people being uh, obsessive about their health, let's talk about vitamin C. Vitamin C is an effective treatment against the common cold, true or false? And can you guys please, um, just put in a key word next to the true or false so I know which one you are referring to when I look in the comments. And it's actually um, false because what was the statement? It's an effective treatment. Actually, no, it's not. It doesn't do anything to reduce the duration of the flu or the severity. Actually, chicken soup is far better for you it has benefits such as providing nutrients and minerals. It also reduces symptoms and inflammations. And this um, little bit here is really helpful if you have an IELTS topic because there are lots of topics about health. And our final true or false question is, a fully grown grizzly bear can run as fast as a horse. True or false? And I'm coming back to your comments before we move on to our conditional questions. So let's see, vitamin C, false. Okay, vitamin C, false. You guys are fantastic, thank you. Um. Black cats are great, Barbara, all right. I, I think I mentioned before, I'm just terrified of cats for no logical reason. And we've got false, false, false. And Mila, the creation of Adam, the creation of man in the Sistine Chapel. Well done, thank you, Mila. Where are you from, Mila? And I'm just popping over to our YouTube to check. Okay, and Maria, the bear, it's false. And um, I can't read the name there from Ukraine, but you also think it's false. So a fully grown grizzly bear cannot outrun uh, a horse. Well, let's see who's right and who isn't. All right, and then we're going to move on to our conditionals. Right. 
and it is true all right let's go back a fully grown grizzly bear can run as fast as a horse i couldn't believe it when i first read it all right and this is scary for anyone who is being chased by a fully grown grizzly bear but look at him i mean he's oh wow he's really running all right now let's look at second conditional uh, questions and answers and i'm going to help you guide you through them so if i were chased by a grizzly bear i would am i being chased by a grizzly bear no no i'm not i'm sitting here and i'm fine and my windows are closed and we don't have grizzly bears in antalya so i'm going to imagine about the future if i were chased by a grizzly bear i would what would i do would i run would i hide okay so we're going to do some grammar and we're going to use the second conditional to talk about imaginary or unreal situations in the present right now i'm in my home i'm safe my doors are locked i'm also on the second floor so this is not a real situation being chased by a grizzly bear the other situation where we use a second conditional is situations in the future which are possible but highly unlikely to happen now here when i teach this i always use the example of if i saw an alien in the future it's not likely to happen but then who knows but it's not likely to happen so if i saw an alien i would or i could or i might okay now let's go back to grizzly bear if i were chased by a grizzly bear i would okay if i were chased by a grizzly bear i would so if you guys can really do this for me type your answers into the chat all right and hi okay we have okay uh, a new attendee david hi there and welcome so let's uh okay so laura horses run fast but laura guess what the bear can run just as fast yeah mind blowing maria mind blowing okay so yuri hi there and welcome nice to have you on board so maria if i were chased by a grizzly bear i would freeze okay and then you would be eaten okay um common if i were chased by a grizzly bear i would climb a tree okay common are you good at climbing trees good job guys you guys are good all right if i were chased by a grizzly bear i would probably just sit down and cry i wouldn't know what to do okay and i've got more questions for you guys so if i were chased by a grizzly bear i would oh mila you're from bulgaria okay i haven't been there yet but i plan to it's on my bucket list lots of places are on my bucket list all right guys so our next question is another conditional question and if you were arrested with no explanation now i hope this is highly unlikely in the future i hope it's an alien situation being arrested not something that's going to happen if you were arrested with no explanation so no one knew what you had done what would your friends and family assume you had done so if you were arrested with no explanation what would your friends and family assume you had done so if i were arrested my friends and family would assume that i had broken the speed limit or i had um, gotten into an argument with an official if you were arrested what would your friends and family assume you had done please type in the chat 
So if I were arrested, they would assume I had, oops, stolen something. Um, I had driven too fast. I had broken the speed limit. I had robbed a bank. Oops. I don't know, guys. You tell me. I want to get to know you through using the second conditional. And while I check your comments, I want you to think about this next question. If you could change three things about your country, what would you change? If you had the power to change three things about your country, what would you change? So if you could, I think, most of us don't really have the power to change things, big things about our country. But if, if you could change, if you were president, if you were prime minister or whatever um, your leader or premier is called, if you were the leader of your country, what three things would you change? And guys, even though we are discussing just questions. We really are using grammar today. We're flexing those grammar muscles. All right. <laughs> All right, Laura, if I were chased by a grizzly bear, I would pretend to be dead. Okay. I, I hope that works out. <laughs> good. Really good answer, Laura. And let's see, Maria, if I were arrested, my friends and family would assume I had killed my husband. Oh, I don't think I can handle this class. All right. Um, uh, all right. But Barbara, if I were arrested, I assume that my family would, yes, they would look for a lawyer. Yeah. But what would they think you had done? What would they think the crime was? And hey, Saleha, welcome. And if you were arrested, what would your family assume you had done? And Maria, good save. I had killed. Good job. Okay. Well done. I can't type everything in the chat because we have lots of people on board today. So I'm just going to uh, tell you guys um, the corrections. All right. If I were arrested, um, Helen, Helen, where are you from? With no explanation, my friends would assume I had stolen something. Okay. Alex, Alex, you are a barrel of laughs. You are just too funny. If you could change anything, you would change your prime minister. And Saliha, you have great taste in clothing. <laughs> okay, I'm just joking. Um, Mila, if I were arrested, they would assume that I had been involved in a strike and some kind of mass action. Okay, you guys are amazing. Okay, keep typing in the chat so that uh, we have lots and lots of good answers. And hey guys, if you make a mistake, that's no problem, you get to learn. And I will correct you. So come on guys, all those who um, haven't done the arrested answer, come on, do it please, it's fun. If I were arrested, they would assume I had probably hit someone, which is crazy because I'm teeny tiny, okay? So next one, if you could change three things about your country, what would you change? Well, if I could change three things about South Africa, my home country, I would deal with the corruption in government, mm -hmm, tackle crime, and revise the education system. There's lots of corruption in government, I think, all around the world. I would tackle crime. We had, oh, we used to have a very high crime rate, but during the coronavirus lockdown, we have zero crime. Thank you, Corona, for something. And I would revise the education system. Our government education is really poor. Uh, the classes are too big, they are overcrowded, students do not get enough attention. We all pretty much, those who can afford it, have to go to private school, which costs an arm and a leg. So I would revise the education system. Okay, enough about boring topics. Let's talk about the fun ones. If you could shop for free hmm, on the house at one store, 
which store would you choose? If you could shop for free at one store, any store, including the Apple store, which one would you choose? And I'm coming to see what you guys have to say to me in the chat. All right. So if I were arrested, right? Ah, Helen, you also from Ukraine. Okay, great. If I were, if I were arrested, my family would assume it would be under false charges. Okay, so you don't get into trouble. Okay. Ah, it's all right, Barbara. So can you give me another sentence, please, Barbara? So if I were arrested, they would assume I killed someone, I'd stolen something. Go ahead, Barbara, give it another try. Okay, and Saliha, you're a good citizen, so you've never done anything wrong. I think you are afraid that someone's watching the speed. Okay, and Carmen, if I had the power to change something about my country, uh, I would change the unemployment, the transport, and some laws. Okay, go for it. Maria, if you could change three things, you would change the president's intolerance. All right, good job. And weather, you guys have amazing vocabulary. Really, really good vocabulary. Um, okay, Alex, I missed your message. I think it's retracted. Uh, Okay, so Laura, if I were arrested, my family would assume I had skipped a police check. Oh, so if there was a police checkpoint, you'd gone through it? Oh, ooh, okay. Nuruddin, you would shop for free at the Apple store. So I'm just going to type into our chat here. If I could shop for free at any store, I would. Okay, so let's see. Anurdin, the Apple Store, good choice. And Barbara, you would shop at a house and cars shop. Okay, and David, you would go to a phone or computer shop. Okay, I can see which ones are the guys. And Saleha, the Ferrari store, yeah, because stuff costs an arm and a leg there. And Adil, Adil, where are you from? If I could buy anything from a store, it would be. Amazon, I like Adil's mentality because they would deliver. <laughs> Alex, at the moment, I had shop for free at the chemist. Alex, please remind me where you are from. You have a wicked sense of humor. I love it. And Mila, if I had the power to change something about my country, yeah, corruptions and stop building unusable buildings. So Mila, is it just they build too many things which can't be used or what's going on there? All right. Now, if you could shop at any store, so nobody wants to shop with me at my store and my store would be, if I could shop at any store on the house, which means free, I would shop up a storm. Here's our idioms for those who've been following my classes on the house for free, and this is needed for IELTS, I would shop at Versace. Okay. If you had treasure to bury, where would you hide it? You guys might not even realize that we are using conditionals all the time here, sorry. If you had treasure to bury, where would you bury it? Where would you hide it? If you had treasure to bury, where would you bury it? Where would you hide it? And I'm going to do two questions at a time. So when I'm looking at the comments, we're not taking up too much time. If you could have dinner with anyone living or dead, who would it be? So two questions. Let's go back. If you had treasure to bury, perhaps you are a pirate or a bank robber or part of that New series, Money Heist, okay. If you had treasure to bury, where would you hide it? And if you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, who would it be? And let's see what you guys have to say. All right. Um, ah, okay, Adil, you're from France, and welcome, all right. And Mila, if I could shop for free, it would be at some kind of craft store, okay. And David, if you could change something in your country, it would be the tax system, why? Do you not pay enough taxes? <laughs> I'm just joking. 
And Saleha, if I could change something, it would be the value of the currency. So Saleha, if I remember correctly, you're from South Africa, which is my country. And the South African rand is, I'm sorry, but kind of worthless at the moment. It's really, really low. I'm so happy I left home. Okay. If I could shop for free at any store, I would choose expensive clothes brands such as Dolce and Gabbana and Chanel. Laura, you're my kind of girl. Okay. Um, the perfect place to shop would be Monte Napoleone, where we could really shop up a storm. If I, Adil, if I could have dinner with anyone, it would be Elon Musk. Well, Adil, you'd like to have dinner with one of my countrymen, Elon Musk. Yeah, it's South African. So uh, you'd like to have a dinner with Elon Musk. And Adil, if you could tell me why you'd like to have dinner with Elon Musk, I'd love to hear about that. And Carmen, if I had a treasure to bury, I would bury it in the Sahara Desert. I would just hide it under my bed. <laughs> okay, good job, Carmen. Nudin, I would have uh, dinner with my family. Good. Helen, ooh, Helen? wants to have dinner with Arnie, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. Okay, good. Uh, he used to be one of my favorite actors back, back in the day. Okay. Uh, he has some interesting videos up uh, during the lockdown. He's feeding his donkey or his goats or something in the kitchen. Very interesting. Oh, Ricardo, you wouldn't hide your treasure. You would spend it. Okay. Okay. And Saleha, if I could have dinner with anyone, it would be it would be with my mom-in-law because she lives in a different country and I miss her. Well, I hope the lockdown ends soon so everyone can be reunited with their families. It would be fantastic. I think when that happens. We will all be very grateful for our families. All right. If I could have dinner with anyone, um, I'm going to make mine a little bit um, more challenging. So anyone living or dead, I'm going to choose dead. Um, I'm actually going to choose two singers, two of my oh, favorite, one from childhood because I was influenced by my parents. Um, so Elvis and Michael Jackson, I don't know if we have any Michael Jackson fans, but quite a few of his songs seem to be very relevant these days. And speaking of music, what would your rock band be called? I'm assuming you don't have a rock band, so we're still talking second conditional. If I had a rock band, it would be called, please type it in the chat and use the entire sentence. Let's practice your grammar. Today I'm actually going to teach you guys some grammar, not just idioms and uh, fun topics. I want you guys to do some second conditional questions. If I had a rock band, it would be called type, type, type. When you see the typewriter, it's typing time. And guys, don't be shy. Don't worry about making mistakes. It's about participating and about learning. And the second question, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? And the picture I have up there is, I think it's Verena in, um, on Lake Como. Um, actually it's one part, one side of Lake Como, pretty close to George Clooney. I think George Clooney would be somewhere, somewhere here and then I would be here. That's, that's the dream. So two questions. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? I would live in Italy, and if you had a rock band, <coughs> what would it be called, excuse me? Okay, guys. <coughs> okay, so let me go back and see your comments. Uh -huh. Ah, because his inventions and his life is, yeah, it's really interesting. He's a dynamic character, Adil. Elon Musk most definitely is. Okay, and Ricardo wants to have dinner with Ariana Grande and Miley Cyrus together. Okay, and 
I'm going to have dinner with Michael Jackson and Elvis, so that will be interesting. Um, oh, Helen, you're a Michael Jackson fan. Heal the world, yeah. I've, I've actually been having a Michael Jackson music fest. Uh, I'm, I've just kind of rediscovered his music. And Carmen, it would be, your rock band would be called Danger Guitars. And Ricardo, yours would be Sugar Rocks. And Mila, if you had a treasure to bury, you would hide it in your wardrobe. Okay, and hi, Eric from Poland. Please type your answer in the chat. If you could have dinner with anyone living or dead, who would it be? Please go ahead, participate, and welcome, by the way. Okay, and guys, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Okay, Eric from Poland. Okay, interesting. Okay, I have a student uh, doing his doctorate in Poland. All right, Saleha, I would live in Dubai. Why would you live in Dubai? Carmen, if I could live anywhere in the world, I would live in an all-inclusive hotel in the Maldives. All right. If, Ricardo, you would live in Tokyo, why would you live in Tokyo? So, Ricardo, sorry, why would you live in Tokyo? <clears throat> Do you guys have reasons for why you'd like to live there? I'd like to live uh, in Italy because of the food, the culture, the history. I, mean, I just love it. Okay, Barbara? Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, Maria. Ah, you'd live in Australia. Okay. Is it because of the weather, Maria? Would you prefer the weather there? And Barbara, if I could live anywhere in the world, I would live in the Canary Islands in winter and in the north of Spain in the summer. So, Barbara, you would like to follow the sun. Okay, Barbara would like to follow the sun. I actually have, oops, sorry, typo, oops, the sun. Uh, I actually have a friend who does that. She lives in Mexico and when it's cold in Mexico, like less than 25 degrees, then she comes to the north. But right now she's in lockdown. And Nudin, you would call your band Purple Doom. I would call my band Nasty. Do you know why? Because my name is Nats, but if you put it into your WhatsApp or anything that has autocorrect, it just comes up as nasty. And um, yeah, I once had um, our Minister of Housing text me. And when he texted me to say Nats something something, he was a student, it came up as, hey, nasty. And um, so I just named my band Nasty. Why not? And let's see, who else do we have here? Mila. Your rock band would be called Fresh Daisies. All right, you guys are interesting. Right, are we ready for our next question? So have you guys told me you, where you'd like to live? If you have, then we can move on to the next one. Would you rather be invisible or have x-ray vision? You can't have both. Okay, so especially the guys, you can't have both. You have to choose one. So if I could have either, I would. Be invisible or have x-ray vision? I would rather be invisible or I would rather have x-ray vision. Next one. If you could own any piece of art, what would it be? Would it be the Mona Lisa? Would it be the Scream? Would it be the Last Supper? I don't think you can take that off the wall, but maybe. Okay, so if you could own any piece of art, what would it be? And would you rather be invisible or have x-ray vision? If you could own any piece of art, what would it be? Would you rather be invisible or have x-ray vision? And while you guys are busy typing in your comments, I'll tell you that uh, if I could own any painting, it would be Swans Reflected in Elephants by Salvador Dali. Dali. And here are the swans, if you look closely, and the elephant's reflection. Okay, so that's what I would choose. I think just because it would really make me think. Um, there's so much going on in a Dali painting. There's so much more than meets the eye. 
And I actually have been to his museum in Figueres, uh, just outside of Barcelona, and it's just mind boggling. All right. And Helen, if I could live anywhere in the world, it would be Spain or Italy. Good choices, Helen. And let's see. Um, Ar Ar okay, RK, sorry, I, I know you gave me your name already. Uh, Arik, Arik, okay. Arik, um, you would live in... Let's see, somewhere sunny, a tropical area. Okay, and Ricardo, you love big cities. Ah, and Tokyo is the biggest, and you love Japan and all the culture and so on. Good, okay. And Helen, Italy or Spain, good, good choices. And Mila, Germany or Ireland? Alex, you'd rather be invisible? Eduardo, hi there, welcome, catch up. Tell me whether you would rather be invisible or what was the other option, guys? I'll give it to you now. And Maria wants to be invisible so she can eavesdrop on people. Everyone wants to be invisible. Nobody wants to have x-ray vision. Hmm, interesting. Everyone wants to be invisible. Okay, Nurdin, invisible so you could scare people. My gosh, you guys are fun and crazy. Carmen, if I could own any piece of art, ah, it would be a Picasso, okay. Good stuff. Anyone else? What piece of art would you like to own? And then I'm going to move on to our next one. It's a little bit similar. <clears throat> but anyway, here I have just put in some options for students who prefer ABC kind of answers. All right. So if you could live on a boat, a mountain, or an island, which would you choose? If you could live on a boat, a mountain or an island, which would you choose? And here's mine, it's a boat and it has my name on it already. So the choice has been made for me. What about you guys? If you could live on a boat, a mountain or an island, which would you choose? I'm going for the boat. Which one would you choose? And what would make you as a parent the most upset? Now, if I'm using second conditional here, it means I'm not a parent, but I actually am, so I can't use the structure. But if any of you guys are, uh, don't have children, okay, you can use the structure. If I were a parent, what would upset me the most? A tattoo, a nose ring, a bad boyfriend or girlfriend? Okay, so let's go back. And look at the two questions. If you could live on a boat, a mountain, or an island, which would you choose? One, two, three. Boat, mountain, island, one, two, three. And the second one is, which would make you most upset if you were a parent? That's assuming you are not a parent because we're using second conditional and we're imagining a tattoo, a nose ring, a bad boyfriend or girlfriend. All right. And it would make you upset. I would tear my hair out if, all right. I would tear, I would tear my hair out if my child got a tattoo. I would tear my hair out if my child got a nose ring. I would tear my hair out if my son got a bad girlfriend. Okay, so you guys, I'm waiting for your answers and then I'll come to the comments to check what you have written. Um, we'll come back to this one. Okay, I'm just coming to check your comments. Let's see. Ricardo, you would own, if you could own any piece of art. Okay, Ricardo, I don't think we can classify people as, as art. All right, I'm going backwards, you guys. Um, Helen, it would be, ah, the clock by Dali. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Helen, no, it seems that we both have excellent taste, Helen. Yeah, but I love Dali and what's it, the, is it called the passage of time or I know the clock's falling off the table. Love it, love it. Helen, you and I should go and rob uh, a museum somewhere. How about that after the class? All right, and our deal, it would be a Banksy. Yeah, I love Banksy. I love the fact that he has this commentary social commentary about what's going on in the world, the girl with the red balloon. Island, of course, Alex, okay. So I will hop onto my boat and I will come and visit sometime. Okay, good, Eduardo. You want the Rosetta Stone, okay. And Maria, you're already daydreaming. I'm helping you to escape the lockdown, Maria. Well, if you were living on an island, you would be in lockdown, wouldn't you? And uh, Ricardo wants a handsome live performer. Okay, and Mila, the great black woodpecker. Maria, I'm embarrassed, Mila, I'm embarrassed to say that I'm not sure what that painting is, but I guarantee you that I will check it after class. Okay, fantastic, you guys. And the next question was, if you could spend the day with any family member, who would it be? So I'm going to go back to the questions. And okay, so Nujan would tear his hair out if his child had a nose ring. Okay, and Helen, you in. Okay, let's do this after class. Okay, and Arik, you would live on an island, a desolate island. Okay, I'll come back to your comments. We are on two different um, streams here, so. I'm seeing two different things. If you could spend an entire day with a family member, who would it be and why? Um, I would spend uh, blah, blah, blah. I would spend it with blah, 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 whoever it is. I can't actually mention names because if any of my children are watching, then I'm going to get into trouble. They are all very possessive. But let's just say child one or child two or child three, okay? Because we get along like a house of fire. We have a whale of a time. We are always on the same page. We are two peas in a pod. So I would spend my day with, let's say child number three, because we get along like a house on fire or because we have a whale of a time when we are together or because we are always on the same page or because we are two peas in a pod. Okay, so I want you guys to choose who you would spend your day with and why. Try to use these idioms. We get along like a house on fire. We have fun. We have a whale of a time. We have fun. We are always on the same page. We think alike. We are two peas in a pod. We're very similar. Okay, so choose one. And then if you could be any age, what age would you choose? 10, 20, 100, the age I am now. So if I could be any age, I would choose to be one, two, three, or four, and because. All right, so I'm going to go back in case you guys are missing anything. So if I could spend an entire day with a family member, it would be child number three because we get along like a house on fire. Okay. And if you could be any age, what age would you choose? 10, 20, 100, the age I am now. All right. Let me go and see what you guys have written. And I know there were lots of comments. I don't want to miss any of them. And guys, get ready with your three fun facts about you. All right. And Laura wants to live on an island. Alex says, bad boyfriend or girlfriend. Helen, bad boyfriend or girlfriend. Yes, same for me. It drove me crazy when it happened. Uh, Carmen, boat island. All right. Joanna, you want all of them. And let's see, Mila. Boat island, mountain. Oh, wow, all of them. Okay. And Arek, okay, <laughs> Carmen and Helen, we are going to rob uh, the museum in Figueres together, okay. And Eduardo, yeah, bad boyfriend or girlfriend, yeah. 
I agree with you. I can barely keep up with child number two's uh, girlfriends sometimes. He drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, nose ring. Uh huh. Okay. And Ricardo, you'd encourage your children to do whatever they want. And it would be with your nephew, Carmen. Mm hmm. Because we have a whale of a time together. And Ricardo. Ah, oh, with uh, your nephew as well. Everyone likes their nephews because we are on the same page. I adore my nephew. Uh, he's one of my favorite, favorite people. I would, spend, <laughs> I would spend time with child number three. Okay, Eduardo, I have a lot of work today. Why, Eduardo? Am I working too hard? If I could be any age, I would choose my current age. I reckon, yeah. And Helen, okay, you guys are happy with the age you are now. Let me just go and check our other feed. If anyone else, I don't want to miss anything. Okay, I have to say that I also enjoy spending time with, with my nephew. We are on the same page. He's, uh, he's a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun. And okay, if you could be any age, what age would you be? So Arik and Helen want to be their current age. Would anyone like to be 10 years old? Would anyone like to go back in time? Would anyone like to be 100? No, I wouldn't want to be old, especially not now with Corona and with uh, lockdown and all kinds of things. No, maybe 20, 20 would be nice. 20 would be a good age to go a little bit back in time. All right, and guys, I have Three more for you. Please get your answers ready for three fun facts. I'd like to know a little bit more about you guys. All right. And if you were on death row, probably arrested from earlier in the lesson for some strange thing you did, like someone wanting, oh, who wanted to, who said it would be for killing their husband? Okay, so if you were on death row for that crime, or Helen and I were on death row for stealing a dolly. Okay, what would your last meal be? If you were on death row, what would your last meal be? What would you want as your last meal? I want Nando's. I want Nando's even if I'm not on death row. I want Nando's right now. So let's use our conditional. If I were on death row, imaginary situation. I would want my last meal to be Nando's chicken, extra hot, extra sauce, with the Portuguese rolls and wedges, spicy wedges. I want the full meal. Okay, so if I were on death row, that would be my last meal. What about you guys? And if you were, re uh, were to remove, if you had to remove or you were to remove, if you made a choice to remove one social media app from your phone, let's imagine if you were to do it, imagine uh, if you were to remove it, which would it be and why? And there's a cute little quote here. I don't have Facebook or a Facebook or a Twitter account. So I just go around announcing out loud what I'm doing at random times. I've got three followers so far, but I think two of them are cops, cops are police. So that's pretty much what we do, right? On Facebook or Twitter, what I'm doing, what I'm eating, where I'm going, check in. It's a bit insane, but if you were to remove one social media app from your phone, which one would it be and why? And then we're going to do three fun facts about you. And I'm going to tell you three fun facts about me, but only if you tell me first, okay? If you don't tell me, I'm not sharing. Let's see what we've got. Uh -huh. Let's see. Eric, you want to be your current age, me, Helen as well, Ricardo, yeah, okay, Ricardo and I both want to be 20. Um, Mila, with your nanny, because you're on the same page, nice use of idiom, Mila. Barbara, I would choose my current age, okay, but you, you, don't, want, you don't want to get any older, all right, and Laura, 20s, yeah, because you had a whale of a time. So Ricardo, Laura, and I are going back to being 20. 
Yeah, Eduardo. Yes, Eduardo, there are lots of people today because we've been promoting it. And I think it's my last class for this week. I haven't signed up for next week. So have fun anyway. It's lots of fun when there are lots of students. And let's see. OK, so Eduardo, you joining me in the 20 group, all right? Mila, 20 as well. OK, because you're full of energy and you're young and you don't need Botox and all kinds of things. Yeah, Mila, it's a good age. And Helen, oh, your last meal would be sushi. I didn't think about sushi. It's one of my favorites as well. Maybe sushi for dessert. Good job. And a Buddha bowl. Um, oops. Uh, is the Buddha bowl the, the poke bowl? Is it uh, Maria? Is the Buddha bowl the, the poke bowl that they are serving in Italy all the time? Oh my gosh, and David wants a kilo of tiramisu. No, I take a kilo of baklava. And you would, okay, um, Yuri, I think it was. Is it Yuri? I'm, sh I'm not sure. Um, it would be Instagram because you spend too much time on Instagram. What do you do on Instagram? And your last meal would be one of your mom's dishes, okay? A burger, chicken, and chips, Nurdin. Good job. Last meal would be lasagna and ice cream. And Ricardo, ah, vegan, takoyaki, ah, Asian street food. Okay, and Monica, oh, a Peruvian dish. Well done. You guys have interesting taste. Ah, Maria, it's a poke bowl. Okay, I had planned to eat a poke bowl when I returned to Italy in March, but of course, everything shut down. I was there in Feb and I didn't get back in March. When I get back, I will try Poke Bowl. I saw it's really popular in Milan and yeah, all over. Even in Dubai Airport, they have Poke Bowls. Okay, three fun facts about you guys. Come on, three fun facts. Anyone with three fun facts? And I'm going to tell you mine, but I want to know yours as well, okay? And if you don't share with me, we're going to have nothing to talk about. <laughs> all right, let's see. So three fun facts about myself, and these are all true. Uh, I once walked through the streets of Milan barefoot. Yeah, without my shoes. I took my shoes off, and that's the picture. I was outside the Duomo, and I was wearing actually Italian shoes. They have Venetian heels. And I think we walked 10 kilometers. I walked in heels and after dinner, I was in tears and I couldn't walk in heels anymore. I, I, so I walked through the streets of Milan barefoot. I know, fashion capital, uh, but I had a good pedicure, so it was okay, <laughs> right? I have experienced minus 40 degrees and that was in Harbin in China when I went for the um, ice festival, it was amazing. And if you ask me if how cold is minus 40, it's cold. I think after minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, it makes no difference, it's cold. But it's also a very dry cold, so you don't shiver, it's kind of okay. Third fun fact about me, I'm a shopaholic who almost never pays full price. I'm a shopaholic, but I buy everything on sale. Now, let's read this. 10 fun facts about you. You're reading this right now. One, two, you're realizing that is a stupid fact. Four, you didn't notice. I skipped three. Oh, five, you're checking now. Six, you're smiling. Seven, you're still reading this even though it's stupid. Nine, you didn't realize I skipped eight. 10, you're checking again and smiling about how you fell for it again. 11, you're enjoying this. Okay. Now, guys, I want to see your comments. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. It would be vanilla ice cream, Mila. Okay. All right. And uh, Shopska salad. Uh, okay, Eduardo, you want to delete everything. Okay. Just throw your phone away. And Arik, one app? Oh, WhatsApp, really? WhatsApp is a problem for you. Okay, Nurdin, when I'm bored, I just scream random things. All right, 
Anyone else? Three fun facts about you guys. Anything you want to tell me? Three fun facts about yourselves. Anyone? I'm just trying to check the comments. I don't want to leave anyone out. Three fun facts about yourself. If you can't do three, give me one. Ah, you like to constantly eat cloves, Eric. I've heard that cloves are really good for um, toothaches. I don't know if it's true or not, or if it's just an old wives tale. Okay, guys. And that's a wrap. I really, oh, let's see, Maria, before I say that's a wrap. You eat pickles every day. You like pretending to be a kid. And you often dance on your own. And Eduardo, you once walked with your shoes on. You've experienced 44 degrees. And you don't actually go to the shops. Oh, you shop online. Okay, interesting. Okay, guys, and thank you for joining me, not just today, but the entire week and last week and whenever you um, have been joining my classes. And let's see, Eduardo, you like to play, oh, you used to play the clarinet. Okay, and Helen, you wash dishes when you're upset. I turn on the dishwasher when I'm upset. No, actually, Helen, I mop floors when I'm upset. I do, I really mop floors if my, floors are spotless, then you know that I was in a bad mood. And Nudin, you like chocolate. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching today. It was fantastic having so many of you on board. And I hope you learned how to use conditionals. I hope you had fun. And if you would like to book classes, you can just click on my profile. I'm also doing group classes. So if you guys want to get together and book a group class, that would be amazing because you guys have been a fun, fun group. So on that note, thank you for watching today, all week through, last week. Stay safe, wear your gloves, wear your masks, sanitize, and stay at home. Thank you, everyone. It has been a pleasure chatting with you today. Ciao.